Yo guys, welcome to the FYI podcast. I'm here today with a special guest. <laughs> I don't want to say too much. We got Alex here. Come on, come on. NQ's, NQ's finest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got AP made you think. Love, man. We got where UKL. We got. It's gonna be a good one, man. Yeah, it's man. I'm happy to one. be here. I was saying you off camera. I don't really do many of these, so yeah. Feel privileged. We normally see you in the shadows, but <laughs> but now you're you're stepping into the limelight a bit. Yeah, man, yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, man, I'm a fan of both of you guys' work. and uh, Love, man. Yeah, yeah, it's really good to be in this. And we're honoured to be in your yeah, presence because, bro, we'll speak about it in the interview. You're, you're, doing, you're doing stuff still. Yeah, thank you, You're bro. doing stuff still. Thank you, man. 100%. What, how, did it, how did this journey start, though? What were you doing yeah. before music? So before me, I used to, I used to play football. So I used to play football. Um, so I was born in Germany, actually. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. So I was born in Germany. I lived there for 10 years. Okay. So when I was over there, I was playing. So I was, I was born in, like... North Rhine Westphal, which is like where Dortmund yeah. and okay. Borussia Dortmund is, and, and like you uh, Bayern Leverkusen. I spot Bayern Munich, you know. I was like, yo, they went there the once. Ah. Yeah, I can't lie. I'll be Leverkusen honest. are killing it. I'm now. honest. Yeah, yeah, they're killing it. My boy plays for them actually. Okay. Was but, you nice um, with it though? Yeah. Was you nice with it? Yeah, I was, man. I was. I don't <laughs> want to gas it, but I was. You know, I was. But I was very big headed because I was very like good at things naturally. Mm. You know what I mean? So even like school wise. I was very um, academically gifted, but I never used to have to revise and stuff. So okay. for me, things came very easy. Which country are you from? Uh, so uh, Nigeria, well, original Nigeria, and then Makes obviously born, born in Germany, innit? Makes sense. But then, um, yeah, moved moved here when I was 10, moved to Manchester, had family in London as well, in Peckham. So every summer I used to go go back and forth. Okay. Um, and I used to always love music. So during that period, I used to always like go on SoundCloud, the mixtape websites, that piff, all these kind of places. And then, discover loads of new artists from just like maybe maybe it's a single that I've heard then I'll, I'll listen to the album or it's an interesting artwork or interesting name you know download it listen to it and then from there a lot of the stuff I was discovering early whether stateside or, or in the UK you know I'd see that they would become big you know like they'll blow up like PMB Rock or you know Notes here you know Code Your Phones those type of artists and you know the ones in the UK I managed to kind of stay in contact with and, and, and build with so around the time I stopped playing football I kind of tried the uni thing, went there for two years. I was doing business management with law at the same time. And then I was kind of just befriending and hanging around people in music. So DJs and people like that. Was you good uh, academically? As yeah, I was good, man. Like I didn't have to, I didn't have to try in it. Like for me, my gift in life is that like, once I understand something, bro, it's, it's, it's long. I, I can just play with it however I want. Pause, you're gifted still, you're gifted, but, you're gifted. Yeah, yeah. So like for me, like, you know, when I was, when I was young doing that and then listening to music and, discovering artists, you know, when I kind of was hanging around it and meeting these people, you know, I was kind of going on tour with them or, you know, whatever, just traveling around the country. A lot of times just, you know, just partying. I was about 21 then. So it was like one of them things where that's naturally what you're doing. You're going, you're going out, going clubbing. And then from there, um, eventually, because I've always been very um, ambitious. So for me, I had to like make a decision in terms of like, cool, I can do, keep doing this, but, you know, I'm not doing anything really. So I was like, cool. Clearly, I've got good ear for music, so let me let me start my own thing. So I did my research in terms of the music business, and then it was like a decision whether to move to London, which I could have easily done with my family being here, um, or stay in Manchester, in it, and you know, understanding the landscape of the music business and also the UK economy as well at that time. What was that time at Curiosity? Yeah. Where, what was like the music? Who was like what was the music? Yeah, so this music? is like our notes. Young oh, okay, Bane, okay. Kojo Funds, the, Abracadabra. The rise of the Jerem yeah. Daily. Yes, that's the Jerem well, Premier. The Jerem yeah, 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 the Premier. first day. When they, when, when they the give plaques. you the, the plaques, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and that, the rise of AU Vodka. Exactly. So kind of when I'm coming up as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was but I was networking with all these people like very organically. I didn't even know what networking was. I was just meeting people just, again, just, you know, vibing, whatever. So even I'm just bait, you know, mm -hmm. he's pivotal at the time as well for our come up. Uh, Graham Daly, as you mentioned. So all these people. Um, I was I was linking with Radar Radio when that was the oh, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and this is where like Grime was like still there, but it was fizzling out, yeah. you know. So even with H, you know, my first artist, he was doing Grime. That's what he started on, isn't it? How did you, okay? The, the yeah, one yeah, I'll get I get to that. Yeah. yeah. So so obviously from there it was like you know, cool. I decided to start my own thing. I decided to stay in Manchester because did you have a YouTube channel then. Uh, you yeah, I had YouTube. A, yeah, yeah, had a YouTube. Yeah, well, yeah. Different reasons. Okay, you yeah, yeah. YouTube. Like. Yeah, yes, because my thing is that. I, Again, I've been very ambitious. So I've yeah. always been very curious and I've never been afraid to do things, yeah. to try things. Because for me, you know, in life, sometimes a lot of people like try to figure out what they want to do. 
But I think the easier thing to do is figure out what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so trying different things, yeah. you can then be able to know, ah, I don't want to do that. So yeah. I, I've done, I dabbled and dabbled in different things. When you say YouTube, was it like a, like a GRM kind of YouTube? Yeah, channel? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was doing like, I have my own channel and stuff. I was doing like, um, what do you call them? Uh, uh, reactions. Okay. Because I'm very calculated as well. So like, I could see, like, if I did this, I would, do you know what I'm saying? I could take this. I mean, you see some of the big channels that have come, you know, even like the US lot, like I see how they've over the years stay consistent and made it. But for me, having done it and tried it, I was like, it's cool. I could probably get there, but I don't want to do it, innit? Yeah, okay. It's not for me. So okay. I was trying different things, you know, did, done radio as well. We had a community radio station in, in Manchester called Pi Radio. I done that. So I was interviewing a lot of the talent that I was networking with when what? it come to... So you're still 21? No, 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 I'm not still okay, 21. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm 27 now. No, yeah. no, no. I mean, while you're doing oh, all while of I'm this. Doing that, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, 21. You're doing a lot at yeah, 21, yeah, you know? yeah, but, <laughs> but I've always been like that. I've, I'm a curious guy, innit? So yeah. like, I, I like to like just very just figure things out, innit? So um, a lot of the people that were, were were I was connecting with when they come to Manchester, I would like interview them on the radio station, whatever. So AM and Skengdo, them that yeah, those yeah. kind of people. So yeah. FK SK, I've not, I've locked in them for time. So finesse forever, guys. Mm-hmm. They've been my guys for a minute. Um, and then yeah, I was just meeting so many different people. But then when I decided to start my own thing, it was a big decision to stay in money because. Everything's in London, really, from an infrastructure perspective. But again, for me, it's like having scoped out and gone to like Newcastle and all these places, it's like there was something always special about Manchester. And mm-hmm. anyone who'd come to Manchester would always love it. Even now, so many people come there every week, bro, all the time. And understanding the economic um, growth as well within the city. So conversations around the HS2, that kind of thing. I'm looking 10 years ahead, like, yo, in 10 years, you'll be able to get to, to money from London in an hour. Okay. Ooh, that's going to lead to more opportunities there. Mm. And also, you know, it's always better to be... Smart brother, the, the bro. Big, I, like, I like that thinking. He's a visionary. Yeah, still, I like that thinking. He's a visionary. Yeah, you, I think for me, it's like, I'm very... I just calculated in terms of how I think. And I like to... Wherever I put my time into, I like to make sure it has impact long term, not just for the moment, innit? Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, with Manchester as well, like, you know, the, the history it has. You know, from music to football to, to fashion to so many different things. It, it was a no-brainer for me. It's crazy, you know? even... Um, Quickly, just next thing, we go back to what you're saying. Even um, the the new owner of Manchester United, the yeah. guy that owned the yeah, Radcliffe yeah, yeah, yeah. guy, yeah, one of the main things he's pushing is like, with how big, for example, Manchester the Manchester clubs are up there, the two Manchester clubs, is like, why is there, why is, why is Wembley, Wembley, Wembley yeah, where's yeah, Wembley yeah, yeah. still in London? Yeah. And yeah. he's trying to set up basically a Wembley, a hub for um, international Football, sports yeah. and a big hub in Manchester. So it's again, so it's back, it kind of interlinks yeah, how yeah. you're thinking, but it's 100%. mad. You're thinking like a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one hundred percent. I think it's it's um it's evident though, because even when I used to come here, it's like yo, it's, co- it's so congested. The the cost of living is so expensive, and like people generally can't afford to live here, you know. And the second best place for people to want to move to would be money in it. So it's like for me, it, it just made sense. In it. And there was talent around me as well. So I, I knew H Samurai, all these all these guys. How do you know the them? How did you come to so meet? So again, them? I was running around just you know just. Being around outside, I was just outside, didn't it? And you know, at the time, yeah, I was just literally yeah, I was you're outside. You're doing a lot. You're yeah, doing I was a outside, lot. Yeah, outside, didn't it? And at the time, again, this was grime when grime was still like, um, kind of doing its thing. There were a lot of grime sets, so I'd go to these sets and just be there. And then obviously, um, H would be there, Samurai would be there, all these artists would be there. And and then from there, it's kind of like how I was building a relationship because especially everyone knew me as like the guy that like knew some of these artists that were bigger. You know, so they would ask me for advice and things like that. So then when it was my, when I made a decision to start my own business and, and kind of be that main guy in money, rather than just move here and be one of many, um, I was like, cool, I got, I know him, I know him. And even at the time, this was like when Bugs and Known first came through, mm-hmm. IMDDB, so there was talent kind of coming out of the city. Yeah. So I'm looking at it and thinking, well, people clearly want new things, different things. So um, yeah, it was, it was kind of an easy decision, to be honest with you, because for me as well, I'm here every week, you know, I'm, I'm always constantly moving around. So I don't mind taking a two hour train and, and coming here to pattern up. Like, you feel shorter when you do it back yeah, and forth. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's not, I don't need to be here 24 seven mm. to, to make things happen and utilize the opportunities, here, you know? Um, so that's kind of how I started. I'm not going to lie to you. That's mad impressive as a 21 year old. Like there's one thing being ambition, but there's another thing for a 21 year old to be thinking about HS2 trains in Manchester is being built in 10 years from now, you'll be able to travel to London in one hour. Yeah, man. So that's going to bring more opportunities and all of that. Like, that's a crazy way of that's thinking. Insane yeah, now for me, it's just, that's how I was always thought, man. I've always thought long-term because I, I hate putting my time into something, 
just for the moment. Because ultimately, even that, even how how I make money, I like to think about that sustaining rather than mm. just getting a quick bag and then tomorrow you spent it and then there's nothing left left in it. So for me, it's like yeah, with with that whole mindset and thinking, it's always about cool. How can we maximize what we're doing today for it to be a, 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 a sustained thing? 10, 15, 20 years down the line, in it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was definitely a, a, a thought process of why I decided to stay in money. Uh, I respect that. I respect that. How did how did you and H begin working together? So you told yeah. tell us how you guys met at the grime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the sets and stuff. Working together. First? Yeah. So he used to just ask me like, just advice questions, and I really talked to him because again, he was like, bro, he was the only white kid in in a room full of guys twice his size. You know, like coming from. You know, again, I came, I came from Germany, so I didn't necessarily understand the, all the politics, not politics, but the differences in terms of like, cool, someone from North Manchester versus someone from South Manchester. So mm-hmm. even that understanding, he's from one side of town and he's going to places where it's a, a room full of guys from another side of town, you know? So I think for me, I just always gravitate towards him and just always liked him. And I think it was really weird, like even like, when I first properly started working with him and like, Signed into the company, I was always like, yo, I don't really know necessarily exactly what I'm gonna do with him, but he's just cold. Like he's he's cold, and he's always been cold. He's always been very confident, and yeah. I think that's kind of shone through his whole career. Yeah. So what made him say like, I, could, I want you to manage me? I don't know. You'd have, have, have to ask him in it, but I, but I, I'll be honest. I think at the time he was just kind of having fun with it. He, I don't yeah. think he ever thought he'd get to where he's got to in it. Yeah. Like speaking honestly. I think he was very, very much having fun with it. Obviously, the guy at the time that was meant to be next was Samurai. I don't know if you guys are aware of who that yeah, is. Yeah. Kind of but, but yeah, he he was like, at the time, like he was next up in it. He was doing like 200K views in a month, which back then, yeah, yeah, I remember. that's like when you had a million views, you were gone. Yeah. So do, to do 200K in a month yeah. consistently, you know, Kenny all Star, all yeah. these guys were vouching for him, K-Trap, like, yeah. you know, Trems, he was popping at the time. And he was even meant to be on like, the SL Gentleman remix. You know, and that's kind of where my first lesson in terms of working with artists came because he was just too much on the roads and he did, he was very stubborn. And I didn't really understand it because, you, you know, when you're just nearly there mm. yeah. and all you got to do is just pattern up for six months and you can mm. you can break through. Mm. And he just wasn't on it. Like the Gentleman remix, things like that. It's like, yo, people are on you to, to work with them, mm. but you're not really communicating in it. But obviously he unfortunately went went inside for, for a big charge and then, mm-hmm. you know, with H, he was always just someone that he would always just listen and be on it. Do you know what's crazy? You know? Um, I had a conversation with um, I hope you don't mind me saying this, YBs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the record. And then one thing he said to me that stuck to me was talking. He said, Sench actually listens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, a big thing, and, man. Um, even um, one time I watched the interview of um, Young Money, the Young Money president at the time, and he said one thing, he said, Drake and Nicki Minaj are everyone on the label listen the most. Mm-hmm. He's like, they listen the most. So it's like, there's a bit of col- correlation. Like, obviously, you're always going to bump head with creative. When there's creati- yeah. creativity, you're not always going to agree with the creative direction. It's normal. There's always going to be disagreement in any partnership. But I feel the key, the audience to take from this is what you just said now. It's like, you, if you're trusting somebody to go in partnership with you, to manage you or whatsoever, there has to be a degree of uh, yeah. listening. Has to be, How man. important is that? An oh, it's so important. There and has trust. to be a degree of com- compromise, compromising and the, the degree of listening, as you said. It's so, so important because... Otherwise, you're just there, innit? For for what? Yeah. If they're gonna do what they want to do anyway, then you know. For me, it's always a conversation. You know, it's a relationship. Any relationship, there's there has to be a level of compromise. You know, mm-hmm. ultimately, it's, you always have to understand as a manager or lay, whatever it is, they are the artist. Mm-hmm. Whatever they decide to do, or you co- you 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 collectively decide to do, they have to face the consequences of that. So that's why I'm always very careful on what I push too hard on. Because ultimately, if you don't really want to do something, I will never force you to do it. Yeah. But there has to be, a, there'll always be a rationale to why I say, yo, we should do this or do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the most important thing is advancing and having a, um, a a working environment where you're working towards something collectively. And sometimes that means I don't get my way and sometimes means you don't get your way. Yeah. That's how it works, isn't it? But I think you always have to understand from a manager or label or whatever perspective you're working with artists or creatives, like you're there to facilitate what they want to do in it. So that's why early on, and even now when we work with new artists, we always kind of set targets. Like, cool, what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve in it? Because I think that way, when it comes time to like discuss things that you may, might not want to do, I will always remind you, yo, but you want to do this, yeah? This is how we get there, you know? So yeah, it's, it's always a back and forth in it. But I think 
if you're open to listening and there's always a, a positive resolution, you know, and that again could be me getting my way or you getting your way, then at least we're moving forward, isn't it? But yeah. if that's never going to be a thing or it's, there's always difficulty towards that, then it, for me, I've learned with my experiences early on, it's, like, it's just not worth it. Just walk away. No matter how big the artist is, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. So, okay, well, six, well, how does Since Night is Free come around? Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. What's your role in it? How do you lot feel yeah. when this is happening? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so this is 20, H do as well? 2018. H is good, man. H is, H is always good. H is, yeah. is, uh... No, is but just, when is this happening? When is, is yeah, it so this is 20, 2018, so boom. So, um, Straight Rhymes, so Straight, Straight Rhymes came out. So, again, this is when I was... Because my thing was like, cool, use my network that I've created, especially in London and the opportunities there to put him on... Uh, out there you know that that it was simple as that you know my thing was like all i can do is give you the platform to showcase your talent then hope that people resonate the way i resonate with it so this is again during radar radio times and places like that so we used to do a lot of grime sets the first kind of big moment he had he had like a, a grime set with a few grime artists and he just took the like he just took the crown i remember i drove four hours down in my my, my old two polo mm -hmm. down to london and then we he went in there 30 minutes shelled it and then obviously went on the net and then from there, conversations started happening. I knew a lot of the Jerem lot, a lot of the uh, Ants, I'm just Bay, Abdi TV, those guys. So I used to go there, link them, play them some music, um, played Jike and a few of the guys at uh, um, Jerem, a song that we dropped before, Straight Rhymes, which went on Jerem, they posted it for free. Like, and I always big them up when that, they didn't have to do that, you know, ultimately. But I always believe like, look, if you like something, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're gonna wanna share it anyway. You know, that's mm -hmm. your job, right? Mm -hmm. But they, they believed in it, liked it, they put it up there. Um, and that was always going to be the the kind of setup for the freestyle, you know, to start his own channel. Because my thing was, having learned from my own personal experiences in terms of like trying to be too loud rather than focusing on, on the actual work, you know, my thing was more like, cool, I don't really care if you become a superstar. My thing is like, let's get those thousand, 10,000 avid followers that actually like you. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why the own channel thing was so important at a time when everyone was dropping on GRM and link up and all these places, innit? So um, we did that as a setup. Because for me, those channels are still, they, they, they're there for marketing, they're marketing too. But I think people rely on them too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we was like, cool, we'll do that there. And then that'll set you up for what we do there. You know, so we we put the preview up for the freestyle. Um, then that started just doing the numbers on on, on the internet and on on Instagram and all that. Then Jerem was hitting me for it, saying, yo, we want to drop this on the channel. I was like, nah, this is the plan. This is what we're doing. We're going to go, go on this. Maybe the second or third song we can go back on the channel. And then, you know, the song came out. The freestyle came out two, three days. Then like maybe like 50K, which again at that time, mm -hmm. 200K in a month is good. 50K mm -hmm. in three days. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you're flying. Mm -hmm. Then boom, they posted it, which again, they didn't have to share it at the time. It's not on their mm -hmm. channel. Didn't have to do any of that. But that started the ball because... From when they posted it, then Ants posted it, then Abdi posted it, and all these other channels and all these things uh, kind of cu accumulated to that. And then they had this kind of first quote unquote moment. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I always remember, because for me, again, it, I, I was very deluded in the mindset of like, we're going to do it, just the matter of time when. Mm -hmm. It's not if, it's when. So when that moment happened, I remember I was somewhere in a studio somewhere and I was getting loads of emails from a and And I was like, yeah, now we're ready. I remember I, I dashed my shoes, I was jumping up and down. I was like, yeah, now is the time to go. So then obviously I spent the next month, two months, just going to London, meeting all the labels and meeting everyone. And my mindset was always like, look, meet people just to meet, even if I don't work with them, just meet them. Because it's, again, for me, as someone who is there to facilitate opportunities for artists or producers or whoever I want to work with, you know, I need to know people. I need to know who's who. I need to be able to pick up a phone and, and connect. So that was my opportunity to then meet all these people Again, nine out of 10 people we met, like it was never to do anything with them. It was just more like, cool, just to know who you are, what you do and, and what you're around. And then it was kind of like, you know, we, we narrowed it down eventually because doing two months of meetings is long. Mm -hmm. So we narrowed it down to two two labels. It was Atlantic at the time, a twin. And then it was obviously since 93, Ricky and Glenn. Mm -hmm. And they just had their, their new situation at Sony. Um, and, and obviously- I've, I've been told um, to one of the twins. Yeah. And Glenn are the two best a and in the whole country. And when it comes I, to, I would say well, so. When it comes to urban music, so to have them yeah. two, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I've been told. I mean, everyone's on it. Everyone was on it. And I yeah. think, you know, the major labor culture is you have to be in the conversation, no matter what, you know, mm -hmm. even if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we might have been speaking to some people that even like it. You know, I mean, ironically, 
we met an A now maybe two, three months beforehand, played him some songs. We didn't even get through the first song. And he paused, he was like, is this the kind of stuff you want to put out? Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, this ain't it. My, my boss wouldn't like this. But then two months later, I'm chatting to the boss. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, this is lit. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to be in a conversation. That's the part of A&R's job, innit, from a major label perspective. Um, but yeah, they they was on it. They they were really on it. They were keen to do it. Um, I think it came down to, you know, I, I made the decision to narrow it down to them two based on the fact that I thought neither of them would mess it up, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I'm also giving them the opportunity to show the value because my thing is always about value. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. And you're with doing you. these meetings. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing these meetings. How old are you this time? 2021. 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 21, and you're yeah, going out yeah, to these meetings. Yeah, okay. yeah, nah, right. I used I'm to say some still. some crazy things that I think, wow, ah, I can't believe I said that back then. <laughs> but I just because I knew again for me it was I, I knew it was gonna have to, it wasn't an accident, you know. Like mm-hmm. for me, it wasn't a thing where I'm like, oh, I'm just thankfully I'm here. No, like here, I, cool, I've never made a penny like that. So no, I'm gonna tell you something, though, and yeah. it's a bad thing about myself. Yeah. Because you're so young, you look so yeah. young. When you first came in, and I'm sorry, that's age's manager. I just thought, because there's a lot of people, yeah. a lot of, especially that era, when everyone was looking for a lot of joker managers, respectfully. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people's bridge rooms, they made them their managers. Anjin. And I put you under that bracket as well. Yeah, I yeah. thought, he's got lucky, he's got age. It's only, nah, honestly, we'll talk about everything you've yeah, done yeah, since yeah. then. That I know that, that I was fully, fully wrong yeah, by nice. judging by a book by his cover. But anyway, you're 21. Yeah, so, so then it was, I didn't actually want him to sign, I'll be honest with you, because my thing was always like, yo, we, should, we need to, own our thing. I was looking for a distribution too, but obviously, again, that's where it comes with like management and artist relationship in terms of like, you know, I understood his situation. He he, he was on a building site. You know, he, he didn't have time to wait for the money to trickle in, you know, especially when now you're H, you're someone. So you're on a building mm-hmm. site, you're working with your granddad. you like, it's a bit like, okay, like it's embarrassing, isn't it? For, yeah. for an 18, 19 year old, however it was that time. Yeah. Not really, so, but yeah. yeah, I know, mm. but yeah, it, it, it's childish. But that's but that's also yeah. why it was like you know for me when we did the deal, it was the deal. The the most important thing about the deal wasn't about the money, it was about the terms. Yeah, you know. So we did a deal which at that time wasn't a normal thing where it was a, a one project deal with no options. Mm. Yeah, and obviously, I think off the back of that, a lot of people were doing the same thing. But my my reasoning for that wasn't to go and, oh yeah, just use them and then leave. It was never that. For me, it's, it's more about, yo, cool, show us what you can add value. And then, because funny enough, we could have done a two single deal and then been out I of thought, I thought they fumbled with that still. I, look, I, don't kept, say, I, I don't I don't want to say anyone- kept H longer. I don't want to say anyone fumbled <laughs> anything like that. You but, can't get H for one H. They, they need yeah, that option still. But, but I will be honest, I think, I think a lot of it as, as well is like, I know how H is. He's the type of guy, if, you, if you're not on him, he ain't going to be ringing you. Okay. Yeah. So as A&R, the label, the, the, there's roles in it. I'm a manager. You co- yeah. You're coming from me for certain things, but you also have to build your own relationship with the artist. You know what I mean? So yeah. especially when it comes to forging music and creating the narrative around what you're trying to release, because ultimately you want to make your money back on your investment. But I think where he was in Manchester based there and, you know, at the time it was a new thing for Since 93 as well. Mm-hmm. They just signed the deal at Sony. Mm-hmm. They never had their own label within a major system. You know, um, Glenn moved over from from um, uh, EMI or whatever it's called, Virgin at the time, um, and they had a few of rights who ultimately probably like they had Fredo, they had um, uh, Lowski at the time, you know, and they were having hits, you know. So I also understand from that perspective. I know you're saying they're priority, but someone at that label told me mm. they had never seen a queue at a show. Like like ages, like yeah. ages. <laughs> no, this is someone at the label told me. Yeah, yeah. No, he broke. Yeah, so when they like, said that opening, yeah. I said. H opened his eyes to like yeah. ha- mainstream compared to the other artists. Hundred. So he, when you're saying he, that, he, when you're saying the priority, I don't, I don't. No, I don't. no, but you have to remember the time of the yeah. like. So this oh, is straight, okay. straight rhymes. Like okay. it, 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 it was oh, yeah. all right, yeah. but it wasn't. This before Keisha Beck. This before any of that. Yeah. So the, it, it, it was. But well, you have to, you understand for how I'm seeing. It. I'm seeing like yo, we're gonna like even from an international perspective, and these are all things I'm saying in the meetings before we even sign. So I'm I'm a very straightforward person. If I tell you, yo, I want to do this, do that, do that. That's what I want to do. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking when I'm saying that. Like, this is what I want to do. But I think sometimes a lot of people come and people have had experiences where people come and say things and then they don't deliver on what they're saying in it. Whereas like, I think I'd, I'd hope people that have known me for the past five, six years, whatever I say, I deliver on, you know? So I think again, with just the, all the other things I mentioned before and, and then that, Maybe even how you said you looked at me, yeah. you know, like probably looked at it the same way where, oh, 
Because think about it, what, 20, 21-year-old black kid for money, but what's he going to know? Do you get what I'm saying, realistically? So I understand it from both perspectives, isn't it? In a sense, so... And I, and I thank them for any, everything they've done. They were part of, you know, amazing part of H's career. You know, his first cut few hits came came out of that situation and it was a great time. I remember like we we, we had a lot of fun moments during that, that, during that campaign. Um, but I think ultimately, I think it got, it was at a point where the proactiveness from why, why I wanted and what I, again, kind of expressed early on just wasn't there. And I feel like because I, me and H already have a relationship and then maybe it was a struggle for them to build that relationship with him. Like I felt like I was doing a lot of work as well from the A&R perspective in it. So, which then I felt, well, I'm not getting paid for. So, you oh, know. Makes sense. Um, and on top of that, look, I never really wanted to sign in the, in the first mm -hmm. place. But that never stopped me from saying, cool, let's do a deal. You know, it's cool. Let's just do the deal on certain parameters where it doesn't leave you um, handcuffed to a situation where we, we might not want to be in after the project. So, but we had we had we had hits, we had we had moments and and we made we made a lot of of it and after that then obviously we just decided to amicably part ways and we went to the next journey. Did they didn't try and renegotiate with you? Yeah, of course they did. Okay. Of course they did. How, how did that how did that press? It, it was it was like it went how it went in. like obviously we got offers and and I was just like, well, like no. Did other labels <laughs> no. have someone was other, was it just Yeah, yeah, loads did, of loads. Did you have garden and leave. Uh, yeah, there was a period. There was a period. Yeah, there was a period. So how long can you release music? Uh, for? I think it was like, for, for the viewers are watching. Could you explain what? Um, yeah, so there's Garden a, Living so the been, music industry is. It's not. It's not termed as a Garden Living, but it's an exclusive term in your contract where, at the end of the commitment, which is whether it's a single or or it's a project, there's a there's a term where um, you're still tied into the exclusive contract. So normally, it's between three to six months. I believe ours was four months or something. Can't remember. Is that it? So yeah. I, I thought Meek Mill. Four months is a lot. When you're having motion, oh yeah, four months is a lot, and that's where, yeah, that's where a lot of times when you're in a situation that, or some artists are in situations where they may want to look at other options, but you're on the clock if you're moving right now. So you have not other. Your best part of call is to negotiate with the people you're with. Oh, okay, that because was you got four so months. You can't either you release for free through them. Which they they might not want to because ultimately they don't want someone to the benefit of their work. Yeah, and they want to keep you, so they're gonna string oh. it out until you you want to chat in it. So yeah. how did they accept no? Because if, if it's not about like if you look, guys told me it's no, so funny like, because you, at the you know, prime time yeah. there I would have locked the door. You know, and you know, like, but you, you know what's so funny? So I, at a time, yeah, because bro, like I said I do I like obviously his lawyer. We did the deal, but like I'm very on the terms of the deal. But like I structured the deal in it, so. Because same question you asked, a lot of people were asking me yeah, this because everyone was rumors. You know how people was talking in the industry. It's like, right, I heard you only got one project. You you can leave. They won't let you leave. They won't. I'm thinking, what do you mean they won't let us? Leave? I'm having to read the contract. <laughs> Legally, like, they am, am I? Am I? Did we sign something? I didn't. I, I don't understand. Ring, yeah. ring a lawyer, like, yo, no, we we had the opportunity to leave, innit? And you know, so it wasn't a thing of like, how did they let you leave? It's like, it, it, we just didn't feel like this was the best place for us to stay. For the next part of the journey, innit? Yeah. Um, uh, so you, when you decide to leave here, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's your next move? So at the time, so during that period as well, when we was doing the project and everything like that, I was again just doubling down on all my networks and meeting people and just um, speaking to a lot of people and um, understanding that I think there's a very difference, a big difference between understanding the business from a theoretical standpoint. So doing my research from being outside the game, i.e., through podcasts or reading books or just research to being in the game and now having the ability to speak to these people, understanding how these these buildings work, you know, the major three, the Warner, Sony and Universals and understanding, you know, the differences between them, you know, the international aspect, because for me, it was always a big thing as well in terms of like the international um, kind of opportunities and moves you want to do. And that's partly because I was born in a different country already, you know. Um, and so with that, it was like, cool. I was understanding the, I met all the distributors beforehand but again, because the the level of deal they were offering then isn't the same as now, it, it wasn't enough for H to just quit his job and do that. So that's where we had to do the the major label deal. Um, but what, I was what distribution wasn't popping back then. It, it wasn't it wasn't what it was now. Um, and I think the people in positions to give you those deals also weren't there at the mm. time. You know, how would you compare it where it is now to? I mean, now it's like I think there's a proof of concept in it. I think the, you know ultimately anyone signing off checks if they sign off a certain amount of money. They need to see why. There's got to be a reference point. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is the time when there's the golden era of, of of black music. There wasn't many people before that putting up numbers on the board, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, 
and distribution wasn't even a conversation. Yeah. Like that. So yeah, it's, it, it was just a different time in it. But um, through that, obviously, we went went and met all the because all the major labels have their own distribution companies that they own. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Sony own the Orchard, um, Universal have Virgin, but it was called Caroline at the time, and then obviously Warner have ADA. Um, and yeah, I met all of them. I was just networking, meeting people, met all the other independent distributors as well. And then understanding the, cause for me, I'm always thinking about cool. What's the, what's the closest proximity to the people that sign off the checks? Mm. So ultimately that's in the US and understanding that at the time, you know, ADA and Warner, the way they uh, um, reported from a domestic standpoint was domestically. Same thing with, with the auction and Sony. Whereas um, Caroline at the time, which is called Virgin now, and Universal, they didn't report into the UK. They reported into the US. So with that, obviously, at the time I met Colin, and just after we signed, I met Colin Batsa, and he had just taken a job at Virgin at the time. Uh, well, Caroline, which is what it was called. And, you know, I, I obviously I immediately hit up with him. Like, I, I really talked to him in terms of, like, just his journey as well. I think we can relate on a lot of things as well because even just down to little things like he used to manage Devlin, a white rapper in black music. You know, I manage a, a white rapper in black music. So even just down to little things, it's like, you know, I really took it off of him. And he's, if you've ever met Colin, he's, 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 a, he's a joker, isn't it? Like, he's just a, a, a yeah, he's just a great guy to know, in it? So with, with that, um, I was already kind of understanding and planning those things in mind if we felt like it was better to move on from where we was at the time. Um, but once we made that decision, it was like, cool, definitely going independent. Cause again, I always wanted to be independent anyway. And I think the experience there showed H as well that, okay, cool. Like there's different ways of doing it. But to be honest, I don't think he believed. I think I understood. Let me not say believed. He didn't understand, but it's kind of what we said before. He just listened in it. Mm. He's like, cool. I know. I, Cause I think even the experiences he had during that summer where he's having hits, Everyone's talking about the kind of deal he signed and he knowing that it was me. Cool. Well, if, you know, if Alex says we need to do this, then cool, let's, so, let's go do that. Did, 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 did yeah. Get, obviously, right, not right getting some numbers and that. When you decided to go to the independent, did there, was there the numbers still up there? What? The independent? No, it, like, my thing is never the number. Just give me the tools. I don't, okay, need, I don't really care. Yeah, so yeah, you didn't yeah. take a big advance up front? No, 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 we didn't take that. It was more about like, percentage. Even how we did it, like, there's, yeah, it, it was more about Surprising, someone like H, you would think... Yeah, but it's not about the not like I don't my again. I agree with you. For me, it's not about the bag up front. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it's because with that, it's business, isn't it? If I if I if you want more from me, then I want more from you. Yeah. Like, but if I believe in myself, then why would I ask for that? I just need enough to do what I need to do, yeah. and then Does it, yeah, build, to cover build, build, do, build from there. Do you there, think about anything for now? Like you're always thinking ten years ahead, even with the um even with the contract yeah, yeah, that yeah. you this you signed with since ninety three, you you thought about ten like. In the future, yeah, not no option. We don't want no option with yeah. it. Like, are you ever thinking for now? Like, yeah, of course, man. You, you, have, you, have, to, you have to, you know. I think um, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't like doing things or wasting my time on things that I focused on the now and then two, three years. It's like that doesn't really matter no more. Yeah. So I don't know. How, like I do, of course, because ultimately you have to. The results come in the moment, innit? it. Yeah. Um, or the beginnings of the results come in the moment, but um, for me, that just that long term thinking has always just been more important to me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good as well. Your, it's like, your mind structured. For I'm, it. I'll be honest. I, as much as I, I work hard, I'm lazy, bro. Like <laughs> if I can work smart. And, oh, you, and, you work smart. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So like for me, you. it's like I don't want to be running around when I'm forty doing this. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Bro, so it's all have to be running around when I'm forty doing this. So I have to think about cool. What am I gonna? How am I gonna set myself up for when I'm there? In it. It's a stress on you. Do, like, are you feeling the mental stress from the from the game, or, or no, is it, is man, it I, That's one thing I love about myself. I, I'm I'm a cool cu cucumber, man. Yeah. I don't I don't really like because as as much as I put pressure on myself, I'm always like I always revert back to like, well, it's never that deep. Yeah. It's never that deep. Or I've been in situations where it's deep. This isn't deep. It's not. So yeah. for me, it's like yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really phase me in that way, man. Okay, and it's ups and downs, isn't it? Like it's part of building a business, part of. Hustling, innit? You know, not every day is gonna be a great day, innit? You see this period that you've gone independent. Yeah. But what other hits are coming out of this period? So the first yeah. is and, and I wanna reference the fact that, you know, you met you touched on it before, like he was like H at the time, he nearly brought the Sony record for email sign ups or the data collection. So he was the the goal in it. And obviously 
you know, with the... You say the, email side, what's the like, So, you know, like... Engagement. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, um, when you do, like, a, maybe a tour and, and they ask for your data, like, okay. pre-order or for the album, the project, and they ask for, like, your pre-order number or your email for the pre-order or whatever the case is for your data on your website, like, he nearly, I think he had, he had like, 30,000 sign wow. And I think the the only person to, to beat him was, like, Charlie Poof. Yeah, mad. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he was, like... Eminem, Mad. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From the UK, that was yeah, that. That was the literally. level, you know, the trajectory. Is, 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 is that Sony? This is that Sony? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it, it it wasn't as straightforward to move him because it's a rival company, mm. you know. But I think, and this is where, like, in hindsight, I really, you know, thank how I have conducted myself during that period because it's very easy for someone to just like not reply to people and mm. just dodge the conversations, isn't it? But we had all the conversations, like spoke to the. The, the president um, at the time as well, you know, and, and you know, reason with him explained but what we want to do. the president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, because that, that's the level it's at now, isn't it? Like it's, he had like, at the time, at a certain time, He's he had three songs. The company right now. He had three songs in the top 10. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. At, the, at a time. That I remember that. You period. know, so it's, it's, it's a big, big deal, isn't it? Um, and if that's about to walk out the door yeah, to a rival yeah, company, yeah, this yeah. is, yo, you have to get involved as a president. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I kind of explained to him what we were trying to do and we were trying to go independent and, and reasons why. And, you know, he respected it. And, and I think he respected the fact that I said I did it and I told him, you know, face to face and had that conversation with him. Because a lot of people would have just like shied away yeah, and not, not done it. Because it wasn't easy. Like, I'll be honest, it wasn't easy. There was a lot of pressure in it um, from many different directions because it's that saying in it, don't, don't try to fix what's not broken. Mm -hmm. If you've got hits and success somewhere, and you're trying to move somewhere else. Why? Yeah. So even that period, and again, you have to remember, I said there was exclusive period. So that's all going on for like three, four months, isn't it? So mm -hmm. it's very easy for someone to try to persuade you to not do what you're thinking to do, what you think is right. But we followed through, went to went to Caroline. So we did a, a, a project deal there for on a distribution deal. Um, and then we did, I did a license deal as well with, because again, the first thing I did was I went to the US Met all the guys there. Me and Colin got on the plane. Met met all the guys there. Met the Virgin a lot in the US. Um, met all the the big bosses over there, and um, through that as well, then met uh, Lucian Granger's son Elliot, Mad who runs Ten oh, K. He has six Elliot. nine in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got Ice Spice as well now. Yeah, he's got Ice yeah, Spice yeah. now as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so met him and then he because they were kind of, I don't want to say equivalent to us, but they were in terms of deal structure. They were going through Virgin, um, mm. as a distributor. Um, so we was able to do a, a license deal for the North American territory for a few years um, for the records we wanted to put out. So obviously we just split the income on that side of things um, for North America. So that's... When license, just for people that don't yeah. understand watching license, you just license, you own the masters. You own it. Yeah, and that's, that's another pet people yeah. mind when I see online. People don't understand like the whole master thing. It's like, yeah. look, like the a license, you still own it. You're just borrowing it to someone basically. Yeah. So... Um, for a period of time. Yeah, for a period of time. So we we licensed it over to to 10k for just America and Canada, yeah. um, but with that we had people on the ground that would help us move and and push the records that we wanted to release, um, and really add extra additional support. You know, um, so the value in that. Yeah, exactly. Because my thing is always about value. Yeah, you, I think it's it's important to explain also as well, people that everybody wants to own their masters, but yeah. you need to know what to do with the exactly. masters. Exactly, you need to do it because it. it's like, look, I could have said now, nah, why am I going to give them a percentage? Like we yeah. do it ourselves, and we can, but. Ultimately, how you don't what, have the boots on the ground yeah, over I there. Yeah, I don't. So I, I'd rather you don't be know the smart. You don't, don't know anything over there. That's not the market. Yeah, and I, I, obviously, again, this is early on where I'm going down meeting a lot of people, bro. I'm meeting people, and you know, but ultimately, you know, even if I have Jay Brown's number and I've gone Rock Nation and met these guys or whatever, cool. Someone who's on the ground that's known them for ten years is going to be able to get more out of them than me, isn't it? Yeah. Realistically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, understanding that, and obviously they, they they were killing it. Like, they had, um, what's that, them producers called, um, what's that, 6 9 all these guys, like, they, they were they were killing it. So, Bro, that's me, the son of Lucian Gray. Yeah, bro. and and even that, like, from that bro, perspective. On, yeah, from that perspective. You were watching, go and, go and Google Lucian <laughs> Gray. So, Lucian yeah, Gray, isn't it? It's, from London, it's, well, it's from London, isn't it? Yeah, London. yeah, they're from England, yeah, yeah, from, from London, England, yeah. Still. So, um, Google, and big up Molly, man. Big up Molly. That's my G. She she works at 10K, innit? Okay. But we did that deal. And then the first record we released was um Rain with Major Tracy, innit? Yeah. And I always remember that because it was it was a, in a session 
um, we had a session with AJ and um, we had two producers in there, but they weren't feeling any of the beats. And I was kind of coming, I don't really like going to the studio, but cause it was like the first big link up for him. And a lot of the, most of the features he, he's ever done is I put them together in it. So I was there just to make sure it was fine, but I, I kept big going Big up you guys, Curiosity, cause there's a lot of managers that you got, Managers just want social media. <laughs> Part of the yeah, artist. nah, nah, nah. You're I'm doing not, the managers' work. Nah, I'm not, to nah. work. I'd rather, well. like, for me, if I'm next year, like, I'm not. What, I'm not really doing my job, innit? Yeah, like, yeah. as long as you're fine, there's people there that you know know what they need to do or take care of you. Then cool. But I'm about providing opportunities and value ultimately. Yeah. But that's all. Bit, that falls into A and R work a bit as well, though. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. You're putting the features together and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, it does. It does. It does. That, but that's kind of why. I think with certain situations where we was in labels and just how the deal structure works, it's not equitable in my view, innit? So yeah. if I'm putting that work, I'm not getting paid for it, I'm not getting points, then cool, I got I got my percentage from the advance, but I don't know. For me, it's just like, it's not, this doesn't make I sense. I was saying quickly, temporary. so the distribution deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it to the artist or is it on the NQ? Yeah? It's, it's, it's to the artist, but how, how we structured that deal is, we were the label, in a yeah. sense, yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. so you're the label, yeah? Yeah, because okay. like, for him, the splits are still the same. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, cool, I respect that, okay, cool. Yeah. So you're saying, like, back to the studio session? Yeah, so we had the studio session, and then obviously I was bopping in and out, and then um, there was someone next to I won't mention who, but I was just there trying to see what's, what's going on. And then when I came back in, um, AJ had got to take Keith beat pack. And I was like, yo, it's crazy. He plays a few beats, and then they found one. Left again, and when I came in, I heard rain, and I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." Mm -hmm. And this is age at the time when he had Lab the Grove in it, so yeah. he was like, "Yo, like, no, he doesn't really care in it." Yeah. So I'm looking at age saying, "Yo, are you gonna ask him or am I gonna ask him?" <laughs> I'm like, "Nah, it's I, a definite." Yeah, yeah, like cool. I asked, "Yo, can we have the song? Like, yeah, we need we need the tune." But I was like, "Yeah, yeah, cool." Again, he's got Lab the Grove. He's thinking, "Well, I don't really need the record, innit? Um, so we, we we took the record. Then obviously my thing was like, "Yeah, we shoot this in LA." With the sun, get take Keith in the like it's just it's done, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? He yeah. wrapped. So um I don't still to this day, I don't really know how the the beat pack came about, but obviously I was trying to get a link through them to to Tay in it. Um, but it just didn't materialize. So I was like, cool. Again, I, at that time I've been to LA a few times, so I knew a few people. So I was like, cool, let me just go to LA and then I'll just go find the guy, innit? First meeting or the first person I, I, I caught up with, he was like, yeah, yeah, I know them lot. Put me on FaceTime with them and then I linked them that night. And then, you know, hit it off. We got, I got a real good deal on the, on the beat. And, and this is Tay Keith at Drake mm -hmm. level doing madness, innit? Yeah. Um, and he's still doing madness now, innit? So big up Cam and, and all, the, all them lot. And then um, they, they really, really messed with us. And then two weeks later, H came out as well. AJ came out. We shot the video. I got them to come to this to the um to the video shoot as well. So he was. If you look at the video, he's on the piano okay. playing the playing the piano. Cold. And I think it's so funny because I don't think he realized what, it, what the level it was. Yeah, yeah. So when he came and you seen AJ Tracy with a chain and yeah. he's like, oh, why? Kind of, kind of impressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, right, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> and then uh, to the point where he he's if you notice he's featured on the song. Yeah. Before that wasn't it was just a beat. Okay. But when he clocked the situation, yeah. you know, he's like, yo, yeah, let me credit, slap my yeah, name on the tune yeah, as well. Yeah. And then um obviously had we had Adam uh no jump on there as well, because he we had a bit of a relationship with him um from the last time I went out and he oh, came to, he actually took brought someone to money to do a vlog at H's uh, Manchester show as well. Okay. Um so yeah, we did that. We, we we linked up with him and then obviously song came out, did like a million streams in a day. And then yeah, rest is history. But then, a unfortunately, of the day, big yeah, up. he did. Well, he did the madness in it. Like, it's platinum in and Australia. This, and, 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 this is, and this is an independent deal. Yeah, independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah independent, mental. Man. Independent. Yeah, the, the, everyone's Caroline celebrating. Yeah, yeah, of course, bro. Yeah, <laughs> of course that. And and for me as well, you got to understand it's a big relief as well, it's slightly because again, all the imagine you go to yeah, a new situation yeah, 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 and yeah. and then. You, then you don't do as well as you did yeah. over there. You've already it's got like your, everyone's looking at, look, this guy didn't always do it. You've already like, got your brief on. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But I got, that's the song we got out of the gate. Biggest song yet. It's yeah. like, yes, do you know what I'm saying? We've made the right decision and it's independent as well. Where and when he's seen the royalties of that, yes, you realize exactly, that we, made a, exactly. we made the right decision. Exactly. So I just want to revert back to the the contract re-signing period, where since mm. night three are trying to get you to re-sign. How did you manage to like convince H to put all faith in you 
even though they're throwing money at his, him, probably his family, yeah. give, whispering <laughs> in his ear, probably taking yeah. him to fancy meetings on the low. Like, how did you manage to, like, how how did you manage to keep all of that faith into you? Yeah, I mean, like, look, that that's that's a question he only he will be able to answer. But one thing I've always said about him, he, like, he listens in, and I, and I and I thank him for trusting in me to make those decisions, and even his family as well. Like, you know, because they was like they weren't involved, but like, you know, they went to shows, they sort of met people, and you know, with that, you know, the people tried to make sure they were nice, and you know, conversations happening. I know how conversations yeah. happening, and again, I have to understand as a as a young person at the time. You know, it's very easy to look at me and think, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing, in it? But I think because I've stayed, I was in the right place already at the time. And I think with his parents, you know, they, they're they lovely, lovely people, innit? And even I remember having a conversation with his dad. Um, and he was just always like, look, like, ultimately, it's you guys' decision. You guys took it here, you know, so you guys, you know, decide what you want to do, innit? Um, so they never interfered in that sense. Um, even if people wanted to get him to interfere in a sense. But with him, I think he just, and, and I think as I said before, during that period in the summer where he was running around, you know, doing the things he was doing, the shows and stuff and seeing a lot of, even people on his label coming up to him live all and saying, right, how did you lot do it? How do you lot have a deal where you can just drop and then bounce? Yes. You know, so I think on the, him understanding that I led the charge for that, I think in my, in my, from my perspective is, Kind of where it was like, all right, well, if you say we should go, he feels like indie, he's then yeah, then. Did you not feel indie. um, because in that kind of situation, yeah, did you feel any pressure? Because if he goes oh, all bro, wrong, pressure, if bro. he goes all wrong, it's yeah. all on your head. Yeah, like because again, I, yeah, there's, there's, there's a there's a period of time where he it was it was three four months in it of just like yo, like all these conversations in it and people trying to pull you in different directions or or give you their own view like. I didn't get affected, but it was more like when I'm getting calls from people involved, it's like, oh my God, like people need to just mind their business sort of thing, innit? But it's, but some of that doubt does creep in. It's natural, innit? Like, because ultimately it's a big thing. You know, you you, you have the next big artist in the UK and you you want to take him in from, uh, you know, like I've been at some points I'm thinking, yo, like, is someone going to come and like X-Man yeah, or like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, like I'm fighting the system yeah, right Yeah, because I'm like, the only guy that's trying to move the, the, the guy from a different place to another place, innit? And this these are billion pound companies you're 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 you know conversating with, innit? So it's um it was it was difficult and, and definitely you know um doubt did creep in, but it was for me it was like look I'm I'm a I'm a very like calculated guy in it and and I, and I look at probabilities. There's never definites in life, but it's probabilities in it. Like look if it if a kid that's just come out the gate, broke nearly broke the Sony record, had had three top tens in, in at one time, and is now having a bit of a two, three month quiet period. Surely the next thing he drops is gonna do well, right? Surely. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially if now you can capitalize of all the things you've built. Remember, we did a lot of European features and remixes at the time. Shiva were in Italy, you know, Seven Alice in Holland, you know, so there's a lot of things that we're yet to activate. We've done, we we're about to do a, a, a a license deal with 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 10k, the biggest independent label in the US. Cool. Anytime Dark came in, I'd always think about those touch points and like, well, cool. That's bound to you make to the next thing yeah. bigger. What made you um, in terms of the European thing? I'm I'm interested in that. Yeah. Um, because it's obviously something that everybody's aware of now. Mm. Um, especially after I think Central C really he put the door down. Really yeah, like, showed everybody how <clears throat> the power of building. Um, yeah. Treating Europe like it's all in America, basically. Mm -hmm. um, what made you do that very earlier on, and how did how did you exit? Because one, there's two questions I'm asking here. Mm. What made you decide to go that direction? Was it you that decided, with someone else advising that? And then two, how did you actually execute it? Nah, it's something that I was. This is like everything that we're doing is stuff that I already planned even before we even got yeah. into the business, innit? Because again, for me, it's like once I'm locked in, I understand something. I'm I'm on there. So even understanding like, you know, I'm a student of the game in it. So like you go and look at the greats, like mm -hmm. and and you know, rap and black music in the UK, obviously we, we have our own source and that whole thing, but there, there is a reference point in my opinion with with what America has been doing for years. Mm -hmm. Um so even trying to build a business as a whole and, and extending into different verticals was always part of the plan. So, you know, publishing records, management, all these kind of things, and then putting over artists underneath that. Now not not everything has transpired in the way I wanted to, 
I think partly because we are unique. We're not America. You know, there's there's different ways of thinking, different ways of uh, of us wanting to move. Um, but with the with the um, the European thing, you know, if you look at any artist that's ever come out of the US and had moments internationally, like the first thing they do is they get on a plane and go there. You know, they they, they do promo, they 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 um you know do collabs, whatever the case is. Even if they don't do collabs, they do promo. They go there, they touch the people, they do shows. Uh, and this was a, during a time where people weren't even doing European shows. I remember. Um, what was this? Western Into. I remember that was huge in um, Holland. Mm -hmm. And I was just thought, why the heck have they not gone there to do a show? Mm -hmm. You know? But because it wasn't a norm to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think the people, you know, from a system perspective, like they're not looking at you as the same way they're looking at as a, a pop star. Mm -hmm. They don't think you're going to work in different territories. Mm -hmm. um, even if the data is there. But for me, it was like, no, like, we, let's be proactive. Let's implement our... Because again, if you've got to understand the similarities we have from a even language perspective with the Americans, you know, mm -hmm. um, and culturally as well. And we've seen it now even more so where people love the UK culture. So for me, it's like, we can replicate the way they've moved. We have success here. Let's really spread that success out as big as possible and as early as possible, most mm -hmm. importantly. And I think that's one thing Sensei did really, really well. Like I was even like the, the song he did with um, Freeze Collier, I was actually in the session. Okay. When he did it, like, because a lot of my friends set that up. So I, I used to go to Europe from early, like four or five years ago. So I was building those connections because as well, one other thing people I think sometimes do is like, they, they kind of just look at the numbers. They don't really look at what someone means in that market. Mm. Um, so you have to respect the market. Cultural for currency. Own, yeah. I always, I always say sometimes, don't compare numbers and yeah. cultural currency. Nah. Sometimes it's two different two things. Two different things. Because we know, yeah. even here, you can name certain artists and yeah. be like, yo, like, yeah, he might have numbers, but... yeah. He doesn't mean anything for depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. You know, even yeah. like you might collab with some certain people because you're trying to get on the radio. Yeah. You know, things like that. Um, so even, you know, spending time there, going there. And I'm a, again, I'm a curious person. And for me, it's like I love one thing I love about what I do is like traveling, meeting people, you know, again, it's not just music I'm involved, in. I'm involved in like business and different things where your hands on networker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hands on. I'm, man. I'm getting a I'm getting a consistent gist of the yeah. story that from when you Started to jump onto music, mm -hmm. coming down to London. Yeah, man. You're somebody you meet. I'm just people. curious, bro. I'm Even, curious. And you're like, having meetings, you're soaking up yeah. information, you're learning. Hundred. You're, you're somebody. Yeah. That's why. That's how you always. Evolving. And I think the connection you can build is so different. Like, obviously, we we've been speaking online and and whatever, yeah. but I'm sure after this we'll have a different yeah. connection than we had before, yeah, innit? So I, I'm I'm a avid believer in like, look, you gotta go meet people, man. Shake the hand, look in the eyes, and. You know, yeah. build a real rapport. But you, you don't know? even see it as networking with you. It's nah, natural. Like, it's natural, man. Like, I don't force anything. Task, yeah. There's people that I meet that like, you can clear, yeah, this guy has no interest in meeting me, no interest in caring about me. Cool. Like, mm. like we don't need to force this, innit? Mm. Uh, um, so, quickly, so, oh yeah, so in terms of you, so how to, how do you, do, first of all, so you said building your yeah. and how did you execute it? Yeah, so going there, man. Going yeah. there, um, people, laying people, the foundations. Were people um, w welcoming? Yeah, man. When you reach yes. Out, would you reach yes. out to managers, rappers? Yeah. How, yeah. how do you do it? Very welcoming. Like, I think, again, remember, I was born was in Germany. Out, was you reaching out on H's page or was you reaching out on your page? No, so obviously, remember, some some people would message him as well. Okay. So with that, it was easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just making sure that, cool, like, he gets a reply, whether from him or I do, and then we yeah. we, we, we make sure we, we have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Um. And going there, meeting people and networking and meeting people on the ground as well, most importantly, because just to really understand what even these artists mean in their territory, yeah. it's really important, isn't it? But um, yeah, we like a lot of the, most features that he's done has come from me, even if I send him artists and stuff, like it's yeah. from me, innit? Um, but I would have done my research or understood what they mean or something, innit? Just beforehand mm -hmm. or even link their team, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Um, but a lot of times, what I used to do is I used to go there first, mm -hmm. meet people pattern up and then I'd bring him with me in it um yeah. at the later date. Um now he's been unlucky in the sense where timing wise certain things haven't really helped him. Um but also because he was so young, like and there are lots going on, it's difficult for someone to just keep that consistency in terms of like dropping and yeah. And 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 learning and like everyone learns at different stages, isn't it? Understands things at different stages, isn't it? So I he's think he's a young boy. He's lit. Yeah, he's man. Yeah, him. exactly. He's enjoying, so, isn't it? And it, that's the thing with him. Like he's never changed. Like he's yeah. such an he's a natural star in a sense. Where like, bro, like I don't need to like prep him, bro. Like just send him out there. He's gonna do his job, isn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. he he's he's on that. But he's very but he's very workman like in that way. He'll do his job and not really maybe think about how else he can build on that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, which is, you really need that to. 
try and get to the next level. But that takes time to learn for some people. Some people's natural, mm -hmm. and some people takes time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to get a mix of both is quite rare. Mm -hmm. uh, and the timing of that, you know, you can have that later in your career, but then the timing of being new, mm -hmm. you miss that window. Yes, but even for him as well, like, you know, after rain, unfortunately, that's when the pandemic hit. So okay. even like, they weren't able to perform that song until two months after, oh, mm -hmm. so until until the, the pandemic was done. Mm -hmm. So it's um, bad timing as well until entering a new era where TikTok then became the thing. I was going to ask you something as well. Yeah. And I want an honest answer. Mm. So moving forward, for us, it was the TikTok era. Yeah. So the pandemic's hit. There was a stage now, Tion Wayne now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, they've been bodies coming along. Yeah. They've yeah. wanted H, the token yeah, yeah, yeah. white boy on yeah, there. Yeah. Credit to Tion Wayne at that time. He's pitched for someone else on the come up, which mm. is very rare because most artists are going to pick who's the, big, who's the biggest option at that time. No, they wanted H on it. Huh? They I wanted H on it. But I said, no, I swear he said, no, I've seen the interview, Tion said he's. The label wanted H on it. No, nah, he wanted H on it. Okay, but I've seen, I've seen something different. I've said he's yeah. pitched to RD. No, no, no. He wanted H on it. Ah, right, cool. So okay, cool. But RD yeah. ends up on it then. So, yeah, yeah. so for some reason H ain't on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then RD ends up going on it. RD shoots up, whatever, whatever. So there was a time and a narrative. I don't know obviously on your end, but I want to I want an honest answer. Mm -hmm. Um it was from the public's eye perception, it's almost like there can only be one white, yeah, yeah, yeah. cheeky, yeah. chappy kind of mm -hmm. lad. And he kind of looked like at that point. Ardi had taken H's taken place. Over, yeah, Am I right yeah. or wrong? Do you remember yeah. that? Do you remember that narrative? I remember that. Yeah, remember yeah that. so there's a time where they think, all right, Ardi's taken over H's place. One, did you feel like, did you feel like that as well? Was mm. you worried about your artist? I was never worried, bro. Or two, how did you look at it? In that My, the, way the, it, the way I looked at it, the way I looked at it, I said to him, look, yeah. I said to him, very, very straight, you've got two options. You either go at him or you work with him. <laughs> okay. There's, there's, there's no in between in it. And I think mm. it took him a minute to do that Hence why the collaboration happened maybe months later. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But that's how I see it. Because for me, it's like... He's why did you go at him? Why did you say go at him? Because that's it. You can't ignore him. Okay. That's There's no third option. Yeah. There's no third option. You can't ignore him. If someone is coming... This is a competitive sport as well. You have to understand. And, and ultimately, mm. as much as like... I like that. You got competitive energy even yeah. the way you comment and respond. Yeah, like, 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 he's competitive, but I respect yeah, his yeah, still. Yeah, but this is the game, isn't it? Like, that's, yeah. that's it. Like, ultimately, you, you eat what you kill, innit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if, if you're not careful in a, in a, in a, in an industry where perceptions, everything. Yeah. yeah. And not everything, but perception matters. It yeah. does really matter. No matter how much you want to say it doesn't, you can talk about your accolades or whatever. Like if people don't think you're the guy or not the guy anymore, it does matter. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's either you're able to squash that through going against him or you squash it through working with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's no, for me, yes. there was no other, Alternative, and as we've seen, they worked together and they had success and it, together. And yeah, it worked yeah. out well. And then it's yeah, panned yeah, out. And right. so so it went straight to number six or something. Yeah. Did, do you think RD helped him come back? On he did, went, yeah. He went quite hundred percent. You know, I like this guy. You know, yeah, hundred percent. I like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he no, he doesn't meet around yeah, 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 like, <laughs> no, 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 That's it. Like, and, and even with yeah. my artists, I don't like. There's no point trying to yeah. lie or like try and make them feel better about straight. Like the fact is the fact in it, and ultimately, yo, the world is unforgiving, isn't it? It's either you again, you eat what you kill. So it's either. Again, you, but I also understand for him, it's like, yo, it's, it's, I can never understand how it's to be an artist. Yeah. Because the, the amount of things they have to deal with, and it's, 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 it's public, especially at the level. Public perception. Yeah, man. Especially at the level, like, you know, they're at, you know, and that's why it's difficult when they're on social media and like, you know, scrolling, seeing so many different things, it's, it affects you. It can affect them in, in so many different ways that yeah. I'm, I might be saying something, but like, look, you don't even know the things I'm having to do. Like, yeah. Speaking candidly, in it, so it's one of them things where, you know, all I can say is what I can say, but mm. event you you have to do it. Where, you know uh, let's, I mean? let's touch on the 2020, 20, is it twenty twenty two because people don't twenty twenty two. Yeah, he's not spoken Wait, about. We get into that, oh, I just want to um, I just want to ask, what is NQ? Define NQ. Is it a management yeah. company? Is it a label? We're everything, but we're entertainment company. But even publishing. Yeah, yeah that's well. that's yeah. it. We're, we're entertainment, entertainment company. company. Yeah, that's what I. I I, I class it as in it like for me it's an entertainment company like we've you know we've done stuff on tv we've done publishing we've done you know label stuff we do, do so many we've invested in a lot of different things can you explain can, can i ask him to explain yeah, publishing sure, sure. is that right yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to you, yeah i feel like a lot of people out here watching here i'm not gonna mm. really know what publishing is yeah so explain like what's the difference between publishing and record label the label side your distribution company record label record label don't distribute oh, you, don't, you do record label yeah, yeah? so you record label I, I was under the pressure you're a distributor still no 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 no. Right, cool so your NQ is a record label well just curiosity what's the difference in your head 
a distribute artist, a record label is like um, you own the, the artist's masters, yeah. you run like, the marketing, everything. Mm. Like traditional record, you run the marketing, the yeah. advertising, put the music together, everything. You have a lot more control of the music, when the music comes out, etc. Mm. Whereas a distributor, the artist has a lot more control. They own, they own a lot of their rights. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. you might just give them a, you might give them money for a project, but they've got to sort out their marketing yeah. budget themselves. They've got to sort out the video themselves, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting, interesting. So what's your take on it? No, I just look at it like, look, it's all words, isn't it? Like, yeah. that's how I look at it. Because ultimately, look, if, if I say to you, I'll distribute your record for 10 years and it's on a 70 30 in your favor, and I say to you, I'll license your record for 10 years and it's on a 70 30 on your, in your favor, then what's the difference? I, yeah. I get what you're saying, but, so example, but if I'm allowed to now decide when I'm releasing my music, yeah. I, it's not like... No, no, but you're allowed to do it anyway. There's a, there's, in every deal, there's approvals. Yeah. Even in a, in a, in a distribution deal... I agree for, with you. For, do you know what it is? I, you, I can't just, wanna, you can't do just dash music out. Do you know what it is? I kind of... I was having this conversation yeah. earlier on, and I was yeah. like... Because um, somebody was saying, saying like the, the, the real definition of independent, mm. the, 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 the definition of in, in the music industry of independent, I mean, besides mm, a record yeah. label. And my argument was... We were speaking about this earlier. My argument was like, yeah, that's independent, mm. but it's not really independent mm -hmm. because you're still having you got um, help, bro. You got people doing help with things. Yeah, you're still having yeah. the help of the machine. That's 100. my point. But what I'm saying is, but it's still that what what, what, the, what the other individual is saying is mm. kind of is technically right. Yeah, they're still independent and they're still being signed. There is, there is, but label. a lot of the people that are screaming that they're not independent because in, in, they're not independent in the sense where. They're in a record recording deal. They're in a deal that they get help <laughs> that isn't independent. Like it's not independent. So you're saying so? Okay. So you're saying everyone at EGA signed to record? Is, is everyone at EGA? I can't speak on EGA. No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, okay. Sorry. All right, cool. All right, okay. Um. Uh, let's not speak because they just get it technical. I want to start yeah. bringing up other artists and they just get it. All people really matter. Like all people I really think, care about. No, people oh, just need to know what they're signing. Still in America. Yeah, yeah. Like, people like, need to know what they're I signing. Think people need to understand what they're signing. So not know, understand what they're signing. Okay. And I think that's the that's the thing. From my experience and just speaking to a lot of people in the industry, like they don't know what they actually want. Yeah. So again, when that when we did deals, we knew what we wanted. It's very different when you know what you want because you know exactly what you want and you go there to but get you it. You had a bit of leverage though. No, but it doesn't matter if you have leverage or don't. You still have to know what you want. Yeah, you have to know what you want, but some people don't even have that option. Yeah, they don't, they might, don't sign. Cool. Might, they don't, they don't, what, no, 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 no. But if you're, if you're an artist, you want to get to a certain perspective, yeah. you need certain things, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you know what you want for yeah, those certain oh, yeah, things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're an artist, you want to get to a certain level, you don't you have the leverage, but you're asking for two million pounds. Oh, yeah, that's what's about. Then that doesn't make sense. Yeah, the point, because you know what it is? The reason why I have to be very clear, because I know people watch it. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want them to misconstrue stuff. Yeah, yeah. A lot exactly, of young exactly, people, yeah, young yeah. artists, they got to know that like, you also have to have leverage to demand certain things. You have to, but that, and that's where- You can know so, what you want. Like when you're starting, you should ask for what you need, yeah, not yeah, for yeah, what, what you, you just want. want. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 my opinion, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But what you're saying is in the long term, just in general, yeah. before you go into the game, have a clear understanding. Have an understanding of what you want. Because then even if you don't get what you want to begin with, you know what to work towards. Exactly. So with them, for example, they didn't sign, because he was clearly wanting the rights and I wanted some sort of independence. Mm. So he didn't sign longer than one project. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, he met his artist halfway and he didn't sign longer than yeah. one project because he had a clear idea of what he wanted. Do you get what I'm saying? Definitely. And I think and I think as well, even on top of knowing what you want, it's also why. Yeah. The why is really important. It's, it's harder to answer than, than yeah. just saying it, but why is important because it also gives you a reason why you want these things. You know, because yeah. sometimes people say, oh, I want to be independent. Okay, why? Yeah. A lot of books are hearing. Why? Yeah. Uh, cool. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to. I took you off a tangent. It's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. But let's take you back. You wanted, you wanted to ask first of all, what are you? You said you was a record label. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the publishing. And then the yeah. difference publishing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So publishing. This is, how, this is the easiest way I can explain it. You guys do branding here. You're like, am I allowed yeah. to? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so this is the Haribo packet. Yeah. So, the product is the Haribo, like the the actual packet, the fruit delicious, whatever in it. That's the master. That's how I look at it. It's the product you're selling. The product that you're you're advertising. You're selling on Spotify. That's the product. Now the publishing is the actual contents of it, okay. so that's the that could be anything. Like that could that's the writer, the people that have created the product, the actual product. Which then on top of that, you can slap whatever you want. Because as we all know now, there's artists that have big songs but didn't write the songs. Mm -hmm. You know, they may start publishing on it, but that's where you negotiate whatever you negotiate in it. But um, that's the that's the difference. If that if that makes sense, the publishing is like the actual. The composition. Content, the composition, the composition of, is, It could be the producer, yeah. it could be the writer. Exactly. So they're going to put the whole right. thing together, yeah. right? They are the publisher. Okay, and then also how do you go and get money for How does money work in terms of the publishing between yes. the masters and the publishing side? So of it? just like the distinction of it, like there's different pots of income from 
publishing. So publishing, you've got sync income. So that's when like your TV, your TV movies, that kind of stuff. Um, then you've got PRS, which is our radio stuff. So, yeah, so every time, just, again, I don't think I'm going to explain this in layman's terms. So every time you're playing on radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. that royalties off that. Royalties off that, you get that. Um, I, then, think even, I think even like JD Sports and stuff. JD like, Sports, um, coffee shops, because every every venue that wants to play music. Even, even clubs. Even clubs, yeah. yeah. Every venue that wants to play music has to pay, play a PRS license. Um, which then at the end of the night, the percentage of what they've made, I think it's like 5% or something, has to go towards paying that license. Yeah. Okay. Um, which then gets gets um, spread around the, it's the songs. Well, it? Yeah, worldwide. Well, gets well. spread around the songs that were played on the night. How they find out what songs were played, I don't know to this day, yeah. but that's how it works. Um, but then also shows you play as well. Um, say you are supporting a big act and they've they're playing. You're playing in front of ten thousand people and you're the only other person playing. Then make sure you submit your 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 um, set list because you make a percentage of the amount of uh, ticket sales that was generated in that. In that um that show, I don't think a lot of artists know that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's important. It's, it's really really important. Yeah, thank you. For but um, so you, so you get so you get you got your your um your radio so PRS. Then you've got your mechanicals, which is basically um a percentage of the music that is made from the master side of things needs to also be um proportioned to the publishing side. And I I look at the ratios like one to five. So if you make five pound on 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 records, you make one pound on on, on publishing, isn't it? Can I ask a question? So how do you go and get the money? If you're well, a publisher? That's, that's not my job. It's the admins. Oh, yeah, people, yeah. people so, in your so team? People administer it, yeah. How but there's PROs in every different country. So PRS is the UK PRO, yeah. you know, so, and in every single country in the world, there's a, there's a PRO that collects. How do you, uh, how do you stay on top? Because, you know, I, I'm just, again, I don't know about the, um, how mm. obviously collects the money. How do Because the thing is, with Masters, it's a bit easier, for, for example, like in terms of from the streaming platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, can, you know... How many streams been there? It's, it? it's more sexy, isn't it? Like that's yeah. the, that's the thing. Like publishing is just steady, Eddie. Like it's 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 there, but, but it's behind the people you can make money off bro, it. Bro, you can make dope, bro. As I said, like you you know, I said off camera, like probably our most successful venture has been the publishing business. Your most successful venture, so yeah, please yeah, repeat yeah. that. Your most successful yeah, venture has, has been, been the publishing business. Yeah, we've had a lot of big hits on that. Okay. So it, it's is, so he's not publishing. H yeah. is not on you. Is he on, under you? No, no, no. He's not on my publishing. No. Oh, but you're signing people on the publishing. Yeah, we're signing well. people, we're signing producers. And what made like you people. decide? Because this is you're talking big talk. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, <laughs> my nigga, bro. I rate yeah. it still. What made you decide to like go on the publish? Because you don't really hear that yeah. from Mandem, from the Mandem. Again, it's understanding. Yeah. I understand the music business. So for yeah. me, it was always an avenue we wanted to explore, you know, and and build into. Um, and I think once we got into the business, when I'm having meetings, that I'm having meetings for multiple different things. I've always set out to do, yeah. which one of them was publishing. So my first joint venture that I did was with Universal. Um, and yeah, we, we had so many hits on there. We had like RD Flowers. This is through my producers that I signed early on. So you why, signed them on the publishing? Yeah, signed them on okay. the publishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but you see when you say RD Flowers, sorry. Yeah. Isn't that a sample? Yeah, yeah but so so how that works. Oh, been is, too so that's another, no, that's another uh, re revenue income street. So it's, so it's a sheet music. So it's like, it's basically, if you have a song that you've wrote or whatever, that can get sampled in the future and then through that you can make extra income as well. Okay, you can yeah, even yeah. charge them or you no, can... No, what I'm saying is because you're saying you, yeah. you produce stuff from all these flowers, but I'm thinking then they sample. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So the original songwriters, they have a percentage on that record oh, as well. okay, got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it's called interpolation or something like that. No, the interpolation is when... Oh, no, so, it's the sampling thing, isn't it? So, for, so like you can sample... You can sample... Um, a song directly off the master. Oh yeah, I get it. Or yeah. when you redo it. Yeah, but then you have to you have to clear the master as well as well as the publishing. Yeah. But if you replay it, and then redo you only it. have to play the master. Oh, interpolation okay. is when you mimic the Yeah, you um, redo it. No, nah, no. Nah. Interpolation is when you mimic the the melodies. Yeah, okay. So you don't just like yeah, yeah. Or, or, or you have say like what's a popular phrase? No, for example, like for example, like if if, if you know Jake says how you feel, how you feel. feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scene, yeah. If I they do could, it on the song, if you do that, they can come up. Even a big example is uh, what's That's that big David O song that um, copy called your phones. I don't want to say oh, copy. Oh, it's the one. What's it? Uh, no, it's not. Nah, non talking. Now you done. No, 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 no talking. Yeah, yeah, but then, but then you think that's the song that he he fingered. That's interpolation. Interpolation. He did the same melody. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you have to clear that as well. Yeah, yeah. Technically, I don't know if the clear. It's the same melody, and you've gone and you're singing the song. That's inter. That's interpolation. Yeah, that's interpolation, bro. Yeah. I'm coming for my piece for that money. Yeah, yeah, literally. So that's that's another um <laughs> avenue of, of making money on that. Whereas Masters is just, well, Sync, you can get money from yeah. Sync or Masters, but then mainly just what you sell. So yeah, yeah so a big up on you on um 
I'm getting into the publishing, my brother. Nah, thank you, bro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you I love publishing. I think, with the, with I think publishing. publishing is like for me, it's more. It's just about the music. There's no, there's no conversation about timelines or yeah. marketing budget. It's just, yo, let's make good music. Innit? And then, do you know, the only thing I want to ask you, some artists get, mm. get, get paid crazy money. Mm. Some artists are like, they'll get crazy money advance on a record deal, and then they'll get they'll sign a publishing deal, crazy yeah. money. Yeah, like, yeah. For example, like I had, like I think it was Kanye West like, signing some crazy money, and Diddy used to finesse people and own the publishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of back in the day, people used to sign the records and publish. Oh, you can't do both. You, well, you can. No, but I mean, you can, but it's, 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 it's bad not business. Really, yeah, it's not it's really bad business practice. practice you, have to sign, yeah. you have to sign separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why a lot of people don't like Diddy as well, because because he used to take their masters and their publishing mm. still. But um, quickly, so this doesn't be spoken about, and I think having you here, one of the key things I wanted to, I wanted to do is um, H is 22, 20, is it 20, 2022, yeah. When's oh, Baby oh, the, come out? Come out? What year did that come uh, out? Baby? baby came out 2020. 20? No. 2022, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So 2020, yeah. 2022, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that year, that H, that's when H come back on a, yes, yeah, yeah, on yeah. a crazy mm -hmm. run, yeah? Yeah. I don't think this is spoken about. I feel like, for example, so Baby, because I saw I saw you respond to Backlash when he yeah, won the Brits. Yeah, I think, yeah. So the problem, so everyone is like <clears> saying, oh, the Brits is racist because he's a white. Yeah. Da, da, da. And I was like, hang on a minute. So what I realize is there's a disconnect here. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a disconnect to what's going on in the mainstream. Yeah. And a disconnect to what people like or maybe see on the blogs. Yeah. Right? And I like that you spoke up. And I like that you spoke up. Yeah. Because what people didn't realize that year, because a lot of people were saying, big up Sench, I'm, 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 I'm cool with his team as well, isn't it? I like Sench. A lot of people were saying, Sench, Sench, Sench. Yeah. What people didn't realize is because we don't pay attention to these things mm -hmm. as well. It's like Sench was doing so well globally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like global, he was, he was becoming a global star. But if you actually started putting stats to stats in terms of what's going on, the Brits is a UK base. What's going on I in the UK? Really, yeah. If you put up stats to stats that year, H was outperforming Bar maybe Dave. Dave, yeah. H outperformed everybody. Mm -hmm. H actually outperformed everybody. I think, and I think people didn't really realize that. And um, and the reason why even Dave couldn't really be because Dave's all a lot of Dave's main performances was from the year in, before. Yeah. In the UK, he was coming back yeah. from Wait, no, no, the UK. Had the one song. You know, in the UK. You're saying that you got to say in the UK. No, no, in the UK. Sorry, in the UK. Dave yeah, was killing yeah, it, though. And he had Starlight. Starlight was the biggest yeah. song yes, that year yeah. from the rap. I remember thing. that. But I'm thinking, but H had a, the Ed Sheeran one. Yeah. Then, H had a song with someone else. What's yeah, the RD one came before that. No, he had an RD one. The, he had um, the baby, and he had a pop one. Someone else featured with someone else. I forgot. He, he done well on the charts. I forgot the song. Anne Marie. I'm Marie, yes. I forgot yeah, yeah, Marie, yeah, Marie, yeah, 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 Marie, yeah. Um, That's a big Sheeran, song. Wait, it's 2022. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luciano as well. Oh, Luciano yeah, yeah. had the number one so, in Germany. So yeah. it's like when people were saying that, I'm like, bro, you lot don't realize, like, yeah, but I think people don't care to realize, man. Like, I think no, but they, they, they need do because they, they, they listen. Because nah, if you're gonna call something, I think that's you guys' job. No, that's you guys' job. You guys gotta educate the people, man. But then when I'm saying that, they're beefing me. No, but let them know. <laughs> but I think well, I like, wait, did no, they beat you because of that? In the comments, bro, beat... what I'm saying, bro, you like kind of like, bro, you know, it's not about racists because yeah. the year before that, Dave, Dave won, Dave yeah. that Storm and, won. And as well, what people fail to realize, yeah, like, and the reason why I was so annoyed is because if you really cared, vote. It, it was yeah, a public yeah. vote. Yeah, yeah, you said Do that. You know what well, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. my thing is like, anyone who spoke up about that situation, well, you clearly didn't care enough to understand that it was a public vote because yeah. if you really if you wanted really certain people to win, but it was deserved though anyway. Yeah, and it was. And for me, it's like, Look, that's, you know, H is his own man, in it? And for me, you know, I just felt like, imagine walking off stage, you just won something. Yeah. And then someone tells you someone's tweeted something about you or there's, there's talk online. Yeah, they tried to take a swift him. Already understanding, like, and probably being insecure about your position in, in the music black industry. Yeah. Yo, it's not really nice, in it? You yeah, know, and yeah, you can yeah. say whatever you want to say in terms of like, you know, reparations, whatever, whatever the case you want to say, in it? Yeah. But like, look, people are people, innit? And for me, it's like, as a as a young guy who's, who's achieved what he's achieved from Manchester, from Manchester, like people don't actually understand as well the 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 a lot of the hard work that goes into what he's had to do. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. not easy, isn't it? If it was as easy as it is, and everyone would be doing what he's doing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who's white or whatever. So, um, for me, I just like was just like really annoyed at that whole thing because it's like yo, what, whatever it's everyone's saying, it's like you're not even you're talking, talking, but you're not even really like paying attention enough to understand why this has even happened or what's yeah. actually happened. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but big up. So anyway, so I disagree. Yeah. I disagree with that as well. Like, like when I'm paying attention, I'm like, bro, even that, like, for example, that baby song. Yeah, man, who's that's song, a bro? massive. I think that was the second biggest. Yeah, second after Starlight. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to go back to NQ go a bit because we drifted off. Because um, <laughs> yeah. NQ sounds mad powerful from yeah. the way you just explained it there with everything with entertainment. Yeah. How did it come about though? Like, was that um, after the H yeah. period? Did you create it after the H period or? When did, when wow, did wow, it was, wow. Yeah, 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 it was, it was all sim simultaneously, innit? I think for me, it was, it was, um, 
you always got to leverage what you're doing in it to get because it's even now they said like the more you're doing you you always need um are gonna need as much as everyone wants to scream independent you need people like people to help invest or certain things, whatever the case is, isn't it? And I've always just reinvested all my money in it. Like I own I own my business hundred percent and have done from the beginning. Not out of, out of want necessarily. It's just I had no other choice in it. Yeah. You know, because if if I'm able to accelerate what I'm doing, you know, then I will. If, if, if that means that taking on investment or whatever it is, I think people are very obsessed with owning everything of their business when it's like your businesses are meant to be built and sold, isn't it? So for me, that's my goal and that's always been my goal. And with that in mind, it's thinking about cool. Well, how do we you know, utilize the things we're involved in around us to be able to put us in a position to make more things happen. Because, you know, very hard on the ground, very um, on it in terms of like making moves, making things happen. But sometimes you do need that extra support and making it uh, making it happen on a bigger scale. But yeah, from the beginning, we've always, you know, set up the, you know, thank, thank to, uh, thank to um, Universal who, you know, the, the guys there who believed in me to do the publishing business, signed, you know, YJ and Litek and, and a few other producers went on to have like, you know, they produce Doja, you know, Flowers, um, In For The Kill for Tion, um, Pass Big, Lou, big, like, big you, got, you had your hands yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big hits. Hands, yeah, just, just big, big just, hits. If people don't know, it's like, yeah. like these songs are guys at the charts. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, you know? these are inter- a lot of international records. International as well, you know? yeah. and, it, and then obviously, you know, even fast forward to now, it's like, you know, the, the Bryson Tiller record, you know, we, we we got the producer on that, and that's like one of the biggest records in the world. That's so insane. it's 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 for me. It's like we everything that we're doing, we, you know, in, we're doing it in tandem with everything else. Because a lot of times I find like you know what we're doing on the publishing side can then benefit on this side, and you know, because for me, my my business and what I say to my team is always like, yo, we need to just make sure we add value. That's that's all I care about. It's about adding value to whoever we work with and who we sign in it. I don't think you um I don't think you realize but your public perception or well, NQ's public yeah. perception adds is the main part of its value. Like when yeah. for example, when, when the, the, the building, the, the HQ when yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the building yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was a flex. That was a flex. Yeah. 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 That was gangster nah, still. <laughs> you know what's mad? Like, cause again, I haven't learned from my um maybe arrogance or whatever you want to call it, but the mistakes I made trying to pursue football when I was young and not really applying myself and then going into music and then being like uber, like just on working. Like even when I did that, obviously remember the the backdrop of that was, you know, the the Floyd, um, um, oh, I forget, I shouldn't forget his name. Floyd. George Floyd. Sorry, yeah, George, George Floyd. Floyd. Yes. Yeah, this is the backdrop of the George Floyd um, killing in the US. And there was a lot of, you know, conversations and things around that and like for me you know i just felt like having reflecting and do reflecting that time during pandemic as well where everyone's at home it's like yeah cool i'm working and i'm focused i'm doing this but like do you know what like i need to also show people that it's me doing it because it's not the normal thing for a from 22 manchester. 23 year old black kid from manchester not to normal. do that it's from so, manchester it's not yeah. easy as well. so it's not even like i wanted to flex or do it but it was it was bigger than me. what i'm doing has always been bigger than me that's for yeah. me it's, I, I get enjoyment from giving people opportunities to you know even a team now i'm really proud of them like they're they're doing a lot of things in their own right in it and making moves in their own right and it's great to see because a lot of them are just people that weren't even anywhere near the music industry especially coming from manchester like it's so difficult to get any opportunities to get anywhere close to this so for them to then take on that and maybe it's a given that opportunity is 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 a godsend, isn't it? Yeah. And the roster you're building is not. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, a it's not a joke. It's, it's not a joke. Yeah, you got yeah, Black Hole, you got yeah, Morrison. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, on, on, a, on a record on a on record, record label side of you got. Wait, they D got Green. Blanco too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. D okay. Green, D Blanco. Green. The green, um, yeah, not, oh yeah, D green, D got green. a few more A star now. You got um, A star, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And that, yeah, that song you just dropped, yeah, 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 yeah. Banger, see that out, bro, yeah, banger, 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 bro. That's all, and I told you a lot earlier on, bro. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like yeah. I said, I had a meeting. Um, I said this off camera, but I was just gonna say to you so, so the audience could understand even your perception amongst it. Because there's one thing having perception with fans, mm. but it's another thing when your peers are are really taking taking notes. Like I had a meeting with an executive at Sony who's been here for a very long time. So his words are lightly, and then your name must have come up in the conversation somehow. And then he just said, yeah, the Addex guy is a beast, you know. Addex is a beast. <laughs> this is how they're speaking about you. These guys have been here for God knows how long, mm. you know what I'm saying? So that like, you're not playing around, my guy, you know. Yeah, nah, but I'm just, I, I just want to achieve. Around. And I think, you know, having the opportunity and being around this, I, I always say even to my team and just anyone, I think it's a privilege to be in the music entertainment business. 
You know, I think especially now if we look at just what's happening in society, like, yo, people losing their jobs left, right and centre. And if you've got a job in music and you, you're you able to, you know, call this your job, like, yo. Yeah, it, it's a privilege. Yeah, it's yeah. a privilege. So you got to go hard, isn't it? You know, I remember where I come from, in it, And like, even down to like, you know, I have, I have I have a lot of conversations with my parents and, you know, we're both, you know, all Nigerian from my family hold and family um house. And, and I think understanding their journey in terms of where they've come from, for me to have a better opportunity. It's like, yo, am I crazy not to work hard? And I enjoy this. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm someone, I'm on it. Like my, you know, propensity for, for work is is very high in it. So I can do a lot of different things at the same time while flying, while moving around. Um, but that's just because I enjoy it. I enjoy it, man. I respect that. You you just um, spoke on people losing their jobs in this, in this industry, yeah, left, bro. right and center. It, there seems to be a decline in UK rap or yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do you yeah, see yeah. it? Yeah, I definitely see it, man. What's your definitely. Thoughts, isn't it? My like, everyone's got an is... opinion and like it's the producers, it's this, it's that. Yeah. Everyone's got an opinion. What what's my opinion on that? I think I think we we we've at times failed to really push the potential of the artists we have had or we are even having. I don't think it's a lack of talent or lack of um, you know, anyone being good enough or anything like that. I think it's just we're not pushing ourselves enough. And I think we've, we're very much, it's a bit of a crabs in the bucket thing where people look at each other all too much, like, and waiting for that person to do something before they do something. It's like, rather than just doing things and, you know, making things happen. I think people overcomplicate things and overthink things. Kind of goes back to what you said of Into. Like, yeah, why, yeah. why didn't they go? To yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, I say be creative, man. Yeah. I say people got to tap into their creativity. Like I yeah. said, it's not, we've got amazing talent, mm. like, a lot of these rappers, like a lot of our artists are so talented. That's why they so, broke so through. Talented, they're man. so talented. We've got such, like just this small island UK, we've got such some amazing talent. But we're talent. also chasing the bag too much. Yeah, and do you know and what we're is, chasing the money do you know too what much. Is, it's crazy. I had the conversation with someone like this but recently. I said to him, when we start speaking about music, let's stop talking about money. Money, yeah, yeah. man. I said, let's, stop, not, let's, yeah, start, yeah. let's, let's start discuss money, bro. Let's yeah. put money away mm -hmm. because this is focus on creativity, you know, and you tap into yourself. Stop mm -hmm. looking at copy and paste. It's good to get inspiration yeah. from here and there. It's good. But you can get a little inspiration, but yeah. if you're literally copying someone else's exact rollout, it's like the love that's taken out of I it. I think man. it's also it's also stopped a lot of great things from happening, man. Because I look at like, you know, even coming from Manchester, it's even worse in a sense. But like, even if you look at London, like, you know, creating foundations and building um, businesses, yeah. you know, rather than always catering or going to the majors or whatever, yeah. you know, utilizing the things you have around, the people you have around, the, the, the motion you have within your own camp. You know, I look at like, you know, Groups like OFB, why has there never been a joint mixtape? Yeah, you know, yeah. I look at like you know, the even again Manchester. Just look how many artists have come out of Manchester in recent years. I was going to ask you, there's only ever been one one collab at, at the hype because I think a lot of people do it once they're in decline, yeah. you know, which you see like a lot, and I've seen in recent years. But why does it take you to be in decline for you to just make moves? And I, I think we've seen how impactful that is when you're doing it at the right moment with Sanchez and Dave. Yeah, yeah, I feel like. Um, I, I want to start about Manchester because you made a good yeah. point because um, yeah. I'm a historian when it comes to music yeah. in general. Like I love looking into history. I don't know why. I'm just a historian by nature. And um, in the, in America, like New York's the mecca of um, mm. hip hop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, but Atlanta's taken over and Atlanta's yeah, yeah, yeah. dominance for ages. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't So with, with Manchester, I was looking like I was looking at, for example, from the blog perspective, mm -hmm. I start with, yeah. They've got fashion concept, officially yeah, urban for yeah, Manchester, yeah, UK yeah. rap numbers for Manchester, treasure mm -hmm. box for Manchester, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's on the blog side of things. And then in terms of artists now, you've got Nems, you've got Bugsy Malone. Tunde. You've got Tunde, you've got Mix Manny, you've got H, you've got, yeah. what's the South for you? Yeah. Jordan. Jordan, and then there's a light skin one, his voice kind of, it was on um, 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 Fumes Mastermind. And, Fumes, no, there's a light skin guy, he was on Fumes Engineer and he got a million views of rap out. But anyway, so. Yeah. I mean, Rems, so, Rems off, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. so Manchester now is getting yeah, the quiet, yeah, yeah. like Bugsy Malone, these are from. That's see, how I always looked at it as the Atlanta of the UK. See, so, so I feel like, do you feel the North? Yeah. Yeah. Can one is one I don't know. Does London got to watch their back right now? Is is Manchester <laughs> coming like Atlanta? I think the difference between Manchester and Atlanta, you know, outside of obviously the talent coming out, is there's there's no unity in it. There's yeah. no there's no like real um you know, working together or community in terms of like working because in Atlanta they whatever comes out of Atlanta, whether you like it or not, they're gonna back it. If yeah. it's from Atlanta, they're backing it. And I think that's just the difference in, in Manchester. I, I think, I, obviously, I try doing that. Obviously, a lot of the people you mentioned, like, I've, I've been involved in their careers from early, innit? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are giving them the first show, mm -hmm. giving them the first brand deal, never took a penny. 
It's not mm. about that. For me, it's more about building the culture, building, building the, mm. build, building the um, infrastructure within the city, and also from a cultural perspective, and you know, in the UK in general, you know, it, it's added to the UK culture, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think once money gets involved, or I don't know, people's egos as well. I think a bit, you know, people just tend to just I don't know. It's, people it's, have to understand. There's the money. Money. We all here for money. We're yeah. business as well. We're businessmen. But at the same time. You can't make everything solely about money stuff. I'll give you an example. Like when Little Wayne was at the height, obviously he's making a lot more money. Yeah. So we've got to put that in context to the average rapper in the UK. But when Little Wayne was at his height, there's a lot of rappers that said when they wanted a feature from him, he would just yeah. do it. Yeah. He would just do it because he's he, I'm Little Wayne yeah. and I'm gonna do that for you. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna afford what I can offer, I'm just gonna do it. I think when you make every move you do, and I understand like I said, I don't want to overly compare someone like Little Wayne to these artists because Little yeah. Wayne's got a lot had a lot more money. So he's a lot more. I think I think uh, that's where the fundamental kind of difference in terms of the US mentality versus UK mentality is different, isn't it? Like, yeah. they're just a lot more. They're more, a lot more understanding about. Like, for example, this is the easiest way to to explain it in terms of even my my first hand experience of it. When I had my publishing business, I had my producers. Yeah, like no one was trying to work with them. They wasn't trying to work with them. No producers at the time were really working together as well. So when I signed YJ, he had some stuff with H. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of already in the game. But when I signed Lighter, he had nothing apart from a mastermind record with Bando K at the time, which went top 40. I remember that. And I was like, look, you guys need to work together. Like you guys need to work together, make beats together. So even when you're not in the sessions, then, you know, you're in a session because mm -hmm. you, you're on the same beat, you know? And, you know, I'll try and like get other producers to work. And it's like most of them just not down to do it because they're just more thinking about my 50% with the artist, you know what I'm saying? That's it. I want to, I don't want to share that with another producer. Whereas in the US, even if you, and that's even if you have a hit or if you have some success in the US, you have any inkling of success, bro, you, you're getting cuts left right. It's like, little baby's mm. going to drop me a beat. Everyone's going to jump in a bit. Mm. I remember when we had, when we um, had Doja with, um, with Sense, so Wire Tech produced that. Um, I was just hitting up everyone that I knew in, in the US. Like, and it was so easy to get them to jump on beats. It was ridiculous. I remember I seen um, I seen Ross, the, the US Ross, mm -hmm. do a TikTok to Doja. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, cool. Let me help. get all those managers. I'm thinking, cool, who do I know that's close to them mm -hmm. or whatever? So I've, I knew someone that's done a song with them recently. Hit them up. Yo, do you know them? They're like, cool. Loop me in an email. Got their number. Said, yo, I published these guys. They've done this. Does he want any beats? Slapped in the beats. Literally, a week later, he laced it. That could never happen in, in England. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. not we don't operate like that. Why? 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 It's, it's just mentality. I think people are just a lot, lot more cautious. Again, just too bit overcomplicate things. Because my my view on it is like, look, the song has never come out, but it's there. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's there, isn't it? Like they're yeah. just a lot more ready for the opportunity. Yeah. Like, look, let's actually do it, and then we can figure out whether it makes sense later on, or mm -hmm. how we do it, or wherever the case let's is. Get it done. You know, you gotta think of how many songs has Drake got that's yeah. just there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Whereas here it's like everyone just like it's like everyone does one song and then cool I'm releasing this next and then I'll figure out what I do next after that it's like no just make music and then you know you you figure it out like it's true it's facts it's factual where yeah. do you think the scene's going right now I was literally going to ask that yeah I think <laughs> I think slowly but surely like like we're figuring out things in it like I think we're figuring out things I think everything goes in the cycle anyway okay I that's, think that's positive everyone yeah. just seems to think we're doomed I feel like you, you see only thing is the, it's a bigger time. problem than just mm. cycles. Because in the entertainment industry has become so much more intertwined. When I say entertainment, I mean different strands of entertainment. Music fit, fits into that. Okay. But if you look at um, just how we live as a society, we have less time on our hands, isn't it? So like when, say an average person, they've got nine to five, when they leave work, they get home at six o'clock, they, they unwind for 30 minutes, 6.30. Now they're doing what they would normally do is their leisure time, mm -hmm. you know, until maybe 10 o'clock. So that's three and a half hours. They have to decide whether to listen to this new project that's come out, this new podcast, um, whether it's a new thing on Netflix or scroll on TikTok all day. You can't consume all these different things at the same time. It's not possible. And then when in music in itself, there's so many things dropping every single day, so many different artists dropping every single day. And on top of that, everyone's sounding the same and everyone's doing the same thing. It's very hard to cut through. So one thing I definitely believe in, as much as like there'll be people that have moments and do things, I think it's definitely more based on communities and finding your community and growing that community as big as possible rather than building a superstar. I think it's harder to build superstars now. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen it with people that have come through, had big, big moments, but they can't sustain that. 
Yeah. I think the last era of that was like the Billie Eilish's, the the Taylor Swift's. Beyond that, there's, there's hasn't things been. Things have become too fragmented. Yeah, it's too fragmented. There hasn't been those big artists that like. They, there's people have big moments. Yeah. But not big artists. I even look at like you know, like I Spice. Like if you look at how culturally big she, as she is, or Instagram, whatever metrics you want to use, if you look at the numbers on streaming. Maybe it doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. You know, and even then, if you want to convert that into cool, put a show on. You don't know who's mm-hmm. gonna turn up. So, and that's where it goes back to that connection of like, it's very easy to tap double like on your on your phone, but cool, getting someone to convert from that to going to see someone live, yeah. that's a whole different type of thing. Yeah. That's again where the connection of like, you know, having someone on social, following on socials versus like meet them in real life, is that's that's the difference. That's the difference, man. That's why to answer your question and also to, to give uh, my own view on how we, build on that is artists need to move around a lot more. They need to really touch the, the fans, touch the people um, and network better. As like, we see they're doing with the whole physical campaigns yeah. now, they're, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. travelling across. I hate some of that, man. You hate it? It's, it's very very it's some, it? Yeah. some of that is just too like... Copy and paste. Do you know what it is? Yeah. Again, it's copy and paste. It's yeah. like, sell records, man. One thing oh. I like with Metro Boomin, <laughs> is, 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 one thing is, I like is. what Metro Boomin <laughs> said is like, I like these tweets, like, they went number one, they done some crazy, I think they had like 400 something million streams mm. that week. And he's like, it's hardly, hardly any physical sales. Mm. That was a flex. Yeah, that's that a flex, was a flex. So it shows people are listening to the music, but like, artists are connecting with the fans now, like, they get to see a London Some artist, people are hustling now. to sell, they're selling, it's not connecting. And let's be honest, some people, yeah. not, some, some people are hustling. Some people some, are not doing it to hustle. Some majority, people is like, I feel like, like the majority yeah. Some people are, it's like, I need to get as much sales probably but, to sell but, to go top But saying that, like, it's hard, it's very difficult to compare a future, yeah. future is part yeah, of that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that era I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can't, yeah. like, how are you going to be a future in 2024, bro? Yeah. That's not, that's yeah. not realistic. It's but true. you can't, by you moving around, like, yeah. cool, yeah, the guy that, you know, maybe is listening to your song in Birmingham, now is like, has a better connect. They took a picture. Yeah, yeah, They're going to yeah, scream yeah. about it in school. And that yeah. increases your chances of like, you know, having more fans and opening up your I know, but I just hate the fact I know, that- everyone does it the same. Yeah. I get what you're saying. And I just hate the fact that it's, it's like- so hard, bro. It's hard. I hate it's the fact that it's like, bro, like, I want- it's like, I hear what you're do you know what it is? I'm happy <laughs> and wanting. I don't even want to say like that because yeah. I'm happy and wanting. It's like, go and get your top 10. Yeah. Go and get your top 10. But then a part of me is like, yeah, there's some that top there's 10 some... genuine. Yeah, there's no, yeah. There is some man forcing it. By but week like, two, you're not even on top 20. There is some man forcing it. But I feel like the majority actually go out there, connect with the fans, yeah. the fans are buying yeah, their yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also that um, volume thing as well. Like people just focused on the volume, innit? Like yeah. of releases. But it's hard, bro. Like okay. it's, it's difficult yeah, because. Yeah. That's the area we're in, isn't it? It's very, very difficult because if you stay too quiet, then you're, you're done, yeah. isn't it? And if yeah. you're too active, it's like, yo, you're just like, you're just kind of flooding the market. It's, Quick question, it's I want to ask difficult. you. Yeah? You think it's just become a bit of a stimulus package for people that are trying to go, yeah. trying to do mainstream? <laughs> when, it's time to, when it's time to, like, the team's like, yeah, we need that mainstream song. Yeah. That's going to. You think there's you definitely mean? that narrative, yeah. There's definitely that narrative. I think, I think um, I'm, I'm low key starting to think it should become a UK stimulus package. <laughs> there's not, there's when I def- want to tap into the white demographic. Nah, there's definitely that narrative, and I think obviously with his past success, because there are all works on, on um, you know, past success and, and what you've done in your your CV in it. Like he's had a lot of hits that have done and performed well. Where you know going forward, it's like you know you you, you get those playlists easier than someone newer, yeah. you know. Um, and we had those struggles early on. But you, you you overcome them with success in it, um, mm. where then if you have success and you you're, you're delivering new records, then it's easier for someone to be like, yeah, we, like we can we can let him in. It's like I don't know why I thought this like, of this comparison, but it's like you know you're a bouncer at a new club. Yeah. It's like yo, some guys coming at the door. You don't know the guy from nowhere. He looks a bit dodgy. You're not gonna let him yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but if like oh, he's been coming here for a minute and, he's, and you know he's coming here and he's not doing no, he's not causing no trouble. I right, cool comment, man. Yeah, I hear that example. You know, still, I don't know. It's a random example. I, I hear it still, yeah, 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 and that applies to that many sense. other. Artists. Dave, you get Dave on a record, but you're you're gone in it. Storms, mm-hmm. I think he's still got massive relevance in today's market. Storms yeah. is massive mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still massive, like, massive, Storms massive, is still massive, massive name. Mainstream. As a mainstream artist, mm-hmm. a mainstream name. Storms is is Storms is like you're saying that he's he's his profile. He's one That's of the last of that era coming to that super stardom. The difference between profile and and. Just yeah. having numbers and doing well. It's but this way, Stormzy has the right song with the right person. Like I said, say Stormzy yeah. and Ed Sheeran. In this country, it's going to do really well. Yes, yeah. Because you have to remember, the average person, like, they're not paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. So there's yeah. no names. Yeah, yeah. There's no names. It's Stormzy. Yeah, no Stormzy. I've seen him on blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's his yeah. names. And that's where the profile thing. But it goes two ways because profile sometimes, the actual... um 
substance of it yeah. may not be there, isn't it? You know Stormzy is someone that's fortunate. Well, has I got think he has got both, yeah, because yeah, he can sell out arenas. Yeah, yeah Stormzy is someone who's... He's a musician, isn't he? Mm. Like, forget what people might have said. I love his music. I love his yeah, music. Yeah, I like, I'm saying, Stormzy's a musician, yeah. bro. Man can't, you know what I'm saying? But he's the only I've, one I've asked you as much as I can. You know, I don't want to keep too much of your time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just leaving it all to you because he's answered yeah, the question. Yeah, you've asked loads of questions, yeah. bro. I can't lie. Like, to close it off, um, yeah. what's, what's your future plans? Bro, I'm just, bro, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm just working. I'm just taking shots. I think, um, obviously, across the, the um, businesses we've got, Especially in music, obviously publishing records, we're signing things, we're looking for things. Um, but only if we only sign things we we feel like we can add value to, and we can actually move the dial on. Um, we want to do more things on that side. Obviously, we're building outside of music as well. So working on the film at the moment, working on um, obviously we launched a, a, a flavored water um, I see it, with, with I see H it, sips, I see it, yeah. Sips. We just launched it in Fireway Pizza as well it's now. Doing crazy. It's in Iceland as well. Yeah. So you haven't tried it? Go go get it. I'm about to launch a tequila as well. That's coming soon, um, so that's 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 really trying exciting. To, trying to destroy every market. Yeah, man, we're we're we're, we're diversifying, man. But um, yeah, but for me, it's just like, but I'm also having fun with it. I think the first few years I got in the game is very like I'm very focused on just achieving the things we want to achieve. But I think for all the reasons we mentioned today, not everything was able to transpire because ultimately, you know, when you're working behind the scenes or working, you know, around talent, you know, you can't control everything. So it's it's not transpired everything in the way I wanted, but I think there's a you know for me it's it's, it's bigger than just work in it like it's life as well as enjoying things and traveling, meeting people, connecting, um and yeah just just want to do more of that. I hear that. How can artists and like producers that want to get your attention like reach out to you and yeah, I mean yeah f- feel free to reach out obviously follow me on Instagram, addicts and Q. Um, but I will say like obviously a lot of artists or managers or even like producers or whatever like kind of are always searching for people to help them but i always say you can you can there's way more you can do for yourself than i can do for you in it because ultimately yeah i might have links or whatever but like look until it makes sense for you to for me to use them then i'm not going to use them in it like there's, there's no point so you've got to get to that level where where it makes sense for someone like me or whoever else you're trying to go out to um, really invest their time into you and believe because not everyone's gonna believe from the beginning. It's not this is not it. It's things I've looked at, I've not seen or understood, but they have moments. They 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 go somewhere, and I'm very good at helping that moment become a a thing in in real life and and actually sustaining that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no one's ever no one ever knows who the next person is in it as much as you can try and predict that. Um, but obviously, if you believe in something, you believe in it. But not every time what you believe in also becomes becomes the next thing. But I'd say focus on what you're doing and um try and make sure that you're you're showing up every single day and just building to to bet yourself in it. Facts, yeah. facts, facts. Thank you so much, man. The way your brain works is crazy. I am glad we got to pick it for a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate Pause. you guys. <laughs> AP, you've been on form, man. You're always I love on form. Man. I appreciate yeah, man, that's some well, sick questions. And it was it was an honor. Be here, man. I enjoyed this for real. I know you don't do this a lot, man. So, no, 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 this is an honor for, for us, literally. Thank you so much, I appreciate man. You guys, man. Appreciate but you guys, man. Appreciate you. Guys, this has been the FYI podcast. AP. Love my guy, man. Addicts. Pleasure. Love. Thank you so much, guys, man. We're out. Boom. Boom.